be nothing formal. I don't have a formal intro to this or anything. So for anyone that's listening, because we'll, we'll just say we're starting now. Uh, how I found Dawn. And how, how do you pronounce your last name, Dawn? Dussel. Dussel? Is that, Dussel. Is that French? Almost like sew, like you're sewing, like, uh, you know, some clothes. Oh, Dussel. Okay, yes. perfect. And you spell it just so everybody knows. <laughs> Go D-U- ahead. D-U-S-S. A U L T. So not and at the, all how it sounds. <laughs> and the reason I had Dawn spell it for you is because she is one of the rare individuals, and I'll keep call I'll call you Dawn. I won't it's rude to say Thank call you. you in a third person. Um uh is that you're one of the rare people that actually put your real name on your channel. I I, I can't begin to tell you because I use my real name on my channel. And I've done this for everything I've ever done ever. I don't use aliases for whatever reason. I, I'm Gen <laughs> X, so it's like whatever. But when I saw a woman do it, I mean, even even my co-host on uh, my main my main podcast doesn't put her last name out there because women are uh, you know and and some they should be you know they're worried about being getting doxxed or yes. you know men looking at you know I, and and it's true on the internet women. As you probably know, if a guy gets your phone number, got the rules of bars still apply for guys to where it's like, oh, she's, you know, after like three drinks at home, a guy will be like, oh, I got her phone in rock. Shit's holy. She's going to be totally into me. And they'll call women in the middle of the yes. night. Like, you've I'm never even talked to this. <laughs> Multiple so, times. <laughs> so I found you. How did I find you? I was, I, I, I scanned the news, you know, the media. I absorb so much media every freaking morning. And uh, you were doing a live stream. Uh, what I do is I type in Flat Earth and I, I search by, uh, in YouTube and I type uh, and I sort by upload date. And there were a couple live streams. And one of them happened to be you. And it's like, I've never seen this person before. Who is this? <laughs> and and then I'm I'm watching and, and I'm going... Wow! Wow! You're actually really good. I mean, you 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 you've got a a wonderful, confident air about you, and uh, your credentials, which we'll get into, are intriguing to say the least. And 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 then all of a sudden, look, it's like you don't even have fifty subs. What the hell happened? You know, wh- how is this possible? Now I'm not one to talk because my channel should have been burned down many times over the years uh, for various things, and we'll get into that. Uh, I, by the way, when we're talking about the shot in the arm, just say the shot in the arm. Oh, don't okay. don't don't use trigger words because okay. yeah I I lost literally a year's worth of podcasts uh, when the when when they went through my back catalog anyway so I was listening to you and it's like okay first off you're on you're on you know our team which is like fantastic and and you're actually putting content out there and for those who don't know uh, it is it's it's rare to see women women on the internet that are actually in our circles. Yeah, now granted, like we just did the uh, uh, the big Flat Earth conference in Vegas just recently at, called called Flattoberfest. And 40% of the audience were women, which a lot of people know that. It's like, wow, it's pretty rare for the, the truther community. I mean, it's, normally it's 90% men, right? I, w- I was expecting that. Yeah, I'm surprised too, actually. Not not with the Flat Earth community. There's a lot of women because it's, it. it's a message of hope. I mean, you, I, I see it in your eyes when you're talking about it. It's like, oh. it, there's nothing sinister necessarily about Flat Earth. I mean, yeah, there's some lies involved, but we had nothing to do with it. We didn't do it. Right. You know, someone someone greater than us. All we're doing is trying to trying to keep the secret. And so there's lots of women in the audience that were into flat earth. How many of them are making content? Very few, because there's a big difference between sitting in the audience and listening to flat earth content <laughs> and making your own big, big difference. OK, so let's get OK. And before we get this is this is officially a subject matter expert interview which i haven't done in, in in a while but if you guys are on my playlist on my channel just rattle off some of the ones i've done in the past uh u.s navy missile instructor u.s navy submarine chief career land survey u.s navy submarine chief again flight instructor industrial valve expert u.s army artillery radar operator uh australian intelligence officer air traffic controller u.s army master gunner uh, army Amy, aviation and ground training and goes on and on and on so I am, it is my pleasure to introduce Don Dusso, who is um, Canadian Army. A, a veteran. Go, uh, sorry, 
Canadian Army veteran. Uh, so let before we even get into because and and the reason why we do that is because people are like, well, what are her credentials? She's probably a fraud. You know, she's just a crazy person living in Canada. Well, okay. Composition. I get all that. I get people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's go into uh, real quick. Let let's get your uh, if you don't mind talking about it. Uh, you were born in. I was born in Quebec, Canada. So French Canadian. So French. Well, I'm bilingual. Yes, exactly. And uh, so in uh, in '82, so uh, many moons ago, and uh, so at, at a very very early age, um, I would say, if you want to get in the back, well, actually, we'll get in that question. But just with the creden credentials, um, mm -hmm. I attended RMC on a full scholarship, and okay. uh, during a time where it, it was obviously very competitive to uh, to attend, which is uh, the Royal Military College of Canada. So it's essentially our West Point Military Academy equivalent or Sandhurst for, for, for other areas. And so I was selected to go there and uh, somehow they sought me, sought me simple to be an infantry officer. And so in the Canadian military, it's quite different than the American military where as soon as you apply and, and, and enroll, you have three choices that you can choose to select for your, your career. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like my first choice was, was infantry and uh, to be an officer and, and I, and I got it. And then, so basically uh, from RMC onwards and RMC, uh, I, I, uh, I won a lot of awards. I was top uh, academic, you know, I, I won top academic awards. I, I won top athletic awards. This is not to brag. This is just to give you the, the background because I oh, hate no, bringing no, this no, up. No, I, I, feel I, want, no, I want you to brag. <laughs> Please, you just throw it all out there. And so, uh, and so I had always, even early on, had uh, was in leadership positions right from the right from the get go. And I think it's because I came from humble beginnings, uh, and uh, we lived like at a shack in the woods, basically in in the Gatsby Z. And I say that as a joke, but it was a you know it was a roof over our heads. You know what I mean? And I appreciate the experience. It was a great experience because it taught me so much, you know, about resilience and about nature and about all of that stuff that I would not have learned had I stayed in a in a city area. Mm -hmm. But anyways, and so I was I, I had leadership positions pretty much always, like even in my first year and my preparatory year before you go. And then in my, in my, uh, my third year, I was first year orientation. So I was teaching cadets coming in about history and about drill and, and fitness and all of that stuff. And, uh, and then also teaching them on the side for, you know, phases that they'd be doing during their summers. And then in my third, and then in my fourth year, uh, I was one of two cadets selected to go to West Point Military Academy because of my credentials. And so I did attend West Point Military Academy for a semester and uh, and because of Canada being in the infantry um, as a career during your summers, we didn't get it off, get them off like ever. And so every summer for months at a time, for three to four months, sometimes um, we do our training. So you do a basic training and then you do a common army phase in my in my situation. And then you do phase three infantry, which is dismounted uh, tactics, essentially. And that has like a. I mean, not as much of a failure rate now, but when I was going through, it was like a 77% failure rate. And I was the only female ever on these courses when I was doing it. Or if there was a female in the, in the early stages within a couple of weeks, they, uh, and, 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 and not because they were weak people. I did this, it's a hard career, right? And so in the Canadian military, in the Canadian, I'd say in the country itself, I'd say being an infantry officer is, is, is likely the hardest job I would say overall to, to get in it. And, uh, but, but anyways, that's just me being biased. And that's um, okay. <laughs> and so when I was at West Point, I actually uh, won like a top athletic award as well. And so I won a, a huge gold coin and it's and I was competing against like uh, the, 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 the elite soccer teams. You know what I mean? Like people with like a lot of endurance and stuff like that. And and uh, and uh, ended up winning there as well, like, uh, like athletic awards. And um, and then I became like a like a like a fourth year fi up staff which uh, was was in the only squadron uh, that I was at that, that that didn't have a captain, like a fully qualified officer. Mm -hmm. And then I was the first female Patricia officer in the history of the rest in, in the history of the regiment. And so uh, there's uh, there's three regiments in Canada for the military infantry regiments I'm talking about. And you have a uh, like the, the, the Van Dues, which is a French regiment with three battalions. And then you have two English ones. But anyways, the PPC allies, the West Coast is the Cowboys. It's the one that has like the most best reputation in my opinion especially with like the longest kill shots with snipers like those are all patricia's mm -hmm. and uh and uh and people that teach these courses and uh as well and i've also taught firearms but i'll get to that and so i was the first female uh in the in the history of the regiment to be uh to be an officer and and qualified and badged i've deployed um overseas i've gone to afghanistan um I've been a combat support company, 2IC operations officer. I've been brigade operations officer. 
and uh, I was asked, which was rare, they don't usually ask, but with JTF2, I was asked by uh, an, a previous boss if I, if I, if he said like I should, randomly out of nowhere, he emailed me and he said that I should uh, apply to the special forces. And so I did, and there's absolutely a, a rigorous interview process, selection process, whether you're an assault or, or supporter. And I ended up getting in and being a, a squadron, a second in command for their, their their training squadron, which was the biggest squadron and, and the busiest in my in my opinion. And uh, and I did that for a few years, got out and then immediately started uh, in 2016 time period um, working with people that were our ex-special forces internationally uh, because I had a good reputation. And uh, and then I was doing like higher level training for all levels of government, including Global Affairs Canada, Parliamentary Protective Services, uh, military police, Peace officers, emergency response, like our our ERT, our homeland security equivalents, and 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 executive protection. I've done that for uh, Justin Trudeau. I've done that for the head of the Toronto Raptors. I can say that now. I've done it for like the heads of the uh, the Bank of Canada, the guy, the people that go to Davos, and uh, and advanced firearms instruction. I've done like advanced driving instruction, and. Um, but the big thing I do now, which got me into the truther community more, was the uh, the the, training, the the courses that I was teaching. Um, I ended up being the uh, the course coordinator for them, mm -hmm. and it's for standing rapid deployment team courses for for people that respond internationally to natural and man-made events. And so, because I got really into that, I had to do you know a lot of research, and not just what's on mainstream media. That was never my job. Like I was never I never watched really a whole lot of TV anyways because I was always busy or or gone. And so I'm, I'm, I'm rambling on. I should probably stop. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're good. You're good. Well, well let me let me slow you down for just a second okay, just so, perfect. People, so people can catch up. So extensive military training. I mean, you were in you were in for 15 years. Yes. Yeah. 15 years. Long time. In fact, I on a side note, because I've known military people over the year uh, over the years, you didn't go career. I mean, 15 years, and then you were out. What? But you didn't want to go career. Uh, any any particular reason why? Or was it uh, like oh, a kid like thing? A Oh, sorry. I keep on cutting you off. Uh, it, so different reasons. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, it's, it's, it's physically and mentally challenging, especially because uh, I was always like, like, uh, especially in the last several years, I was always high level positions and always yeah. busy and I'm like barely home able to function. And I wanted a family. And so like, that was yeah. never going to happen. And yeah. so like, I, I'm, I'm openly saying that. Right. And, and I feel like even 15 years, I would recommend women like, you know what I mean? If you want a family, like uh, I just kept on delaying because things just always, it always was like a, like a fire, you know, like to put out. Yeah. I felt like an obligation to like to be of service to people that weren't getting like the same attention or care to them that, right. that they would they were getting from other officers or, or things like that. And if we gotcha. see with what happened with um I, I, I got you. Know the word, but like the plant the pandemic, you know what I mean? Like you yeah. can see that like a lot of people kind of like turn their back on all levels of government. So, so yeah, I know I I, to I totally get it. And that and that sounds similar. So you were thriving in crisis management. And to to the point where, and all of a sudden you're like, oh crap! If I don't get out now, I'm never gonna have a family. So well, it just no. It was actually uh, like I honestly had a. Uh, it was it was too much. Like there was just oh. like I had basically like a, almost like a breakdown because like the, like I just um, there was just so much going on, and like that's around the same time that I, I learned about 9/11 more. And oh. uh, anyway, and and it was just like there was just a lot going on because I've lost people in war and stuff like that. And oh no, no, it's cool. Suicide. It's cool. I, it was and so I was I I was so angry. Like I just it was, it was a hard period of my life, and so I I, I realized that I needed to get out just to heal and yeah. unpack what the fudge. You know what I mean? Like the last fifteen years was even about. And, right. Uh, oh, but anyways. <laughs> and 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 you don't and no no regrets there. Fifteen years. If you had a chance to do it over again, you'd pretty much. <laughs> You, you might get out a little earlier than 15 years if you had to do it over again, maybe. I I, would, I I don't have any regrets for anything I've ever done, honestly. And so I would say at this point, I have no regrets for the time I did. Um, and, uh, and and I feel like there was a purpose and a reason in that as well. That, you know, uh, you know, great. Like I had a lot of experiences that, that got me to the place where I'm at now, which is why I'm sure. sharing information because I feel like I've gotten... I've collected so much information by virtue of my experiences, my skill sets and my, my travel and the people that I've been connected to. Yeah. And then my, and then my own research, obviously a lot of that as well to, uh, to be able to uh, like, not just get to this point, but hopefully like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like yeah. this stuff get even more out. I gotcha. And yeah. And, and yeah, you absorbed so much that, yeah, almost through osmosis, you started to figure out pretty quick that, What's the old saying? Uh, well, we use the Napoleon saying uh, because you're part French. Uh, is that uh, uh, history is just lies that are agreed upon, 
and you're like and, and all of a sudden you're in the middle of that you're in the middle of that machine and it's yep. like wait a minute the the general population has no freaking idea and a lot of people don't even in within the government that's what i want to say too have no idea like i, I literally want to say that as well people genuinely like a lot of people even at the levels that you would expect them to know things they actually don't like i like yeah. you know and they should though that's not an excuse i get mad because i'm like yeah. you should know and you don't what am i you know what i mean and i'm giving you the information so like why are yeah. you looking at it and instead yeah. they're calling me a conspiracy theorist they're calling me like a white supremacist i'm getting called a racist like and these are from my peers people that i've actually served with you know what i mean like risked my life with overseas or built up like their like their businesses and i'm just like wow like <laughs> I know, I know. Well, <laughs> ignorant, you know this better than most. Ignorance is bliss, and so many people are so much more comfortable just living in that in the bubble. That's like, no, it's safe in here. I don't want to know what's outside of the bubble. And oh, you, you, yeah. you have not been shy. And we won't necessarily go into the Canadian stuff that much. You know, if you if your guys are curious, you're living in Canada. You want to know what's going on with with all the 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 bad stuff that's happening in Canadian politics and everything that's happening there. Please please listen to her channel. And by the way, I'm going to plug your channel multiple times during the show. Oh, thank your you. channel your channel is there's no aliases is literally Don Dusso. Uh <laughs> And you have to spell it. Oh, good lord, how do I spell it again? It's D U S S A U L T. So go to her channel, and we'll do this more as we're going on. Okay, so massive credibility. Thank you for your service, so on and so on. Again, uh, a vet, you know, by the way, I, I don't think I have anybody Canadian on my list, which is awesome. You know, I, I don't have Canadian First military. Nice. You are, yes. I've got I've got American military, I got Australian military. Uh, I've got some British guys. I do not have a Canadian, which is awesome. So when was okay let, let's start out early what was because i'm going to ask you some of the questions people asked me which was what was the first thing when you were started digging into different rabbit holes what was the first rabbit hole you fell down where all of a sudden it kept you up at night or or you you woke up it's like oh man there's some bad stuff happening out there wait what, what was the first one that caught your eye and and be, um, if you want to be delicate you can you know if you can't say it but go ahead I, uh, great questions. And I would say that like, I've never been entirely trusting of yeah. even education systems or, or the government just by virtue of like how I was raised. And so, right. and I'll say that because like in my family, we have people that are hard workers, that are blue collar, you know what I mean? But we also have academics. Right. And, uh, and so with my, with my brother, he is, uh, is someone that skipped grades. He's someone that, uh, like, you know, was it like engineering degree, all that stuff. And someone who, uh, when he was a teenager, when I was very young, like there's like a, seven year period almost between, I'm sorry, six year period between us, but he, he corrected a math textbook, like an advanced mathematics. And I was a kid. And like, to me that blew, like I, like that day, like I was like, I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean a textbook was correct? I was a kid. Right. So I thought like all textbooks, all school books, everything, like they were all accurate. They're all and perfect. So, yeah. Yeah. I thought that everything was legit. You know what I mean? I know that's naive, but I was a kid. Right. And so like, and so for me, I was like, you can't like, what do you mean you're correcting it? Like that's like correcting like math from a calculator in my opinion, you know? And right. so after that, I was like, uh, like even math can be questioned. Like, you know what I mean? And, and, and so I, I, I obsessed with reading, uh, at a very young age. And so a lot of the, uh, like, the, like science books, more science books, more nature books and stuff like that. And, yeah. um, and then I always just came at things with a little bit more uh, uh, questioning. And then even when I was in uh, the Gatsby Z, uh, like I, I wrote a book and I like a little book, but I think I was like maybe 10, I want to say 10 or 11 years old. And it was about the ghost ships of Shalor Bay, because even mm -hmm. then, like, like the distance of, of seeing things like I like it, it didn't make sense to me. And uh, and so but I wasn't connecting the dot that it was because of flat earth at all. I was just questioning things. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. So I wrote a book, a little whatever about the ghost ships of Shalor Bay, because the Shalor Bay is like, uh, like that's like Gatsby Z is a peninsula and the, the Shalor yeah. Bay is kind of like in the southern area of it. And, uh, and again, I just left it, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I don't even have the friggin' book anymore because like when we left all, everything was, was, uh, of course, like, uh, taken like a lot of stuff, taken, even trophies and, and, and other things I had received from other things, but, but I didn't think that, uh, it would be at this scale. And so I would say probably around 2000 and, oh yeah. And being in the infantry, like, uh, we, we like I, like, and I was a political science degree for RMC because you couldn't get engineering if you were in the infantry because it was a more complicated degree and higher risk of failing and all that other stuff. But, but, but even then, like, like I was learning about history and, um, 
yeah. And it was just like, like some things were just like, oh shit, they really did that. You know what I mean? I'm sorry for swearing. You know what I mean? But these are other countries and these are bad people in other countries. And it's right. not people that would ever do anything like, like against their citizens. You know what I mean? Like, like here in Canada or you ever in the U S you know what I mean? So I was still naive. And yeah. then it was only within like 2016, like, cause when I would travel, I, I was very cautious no matter what. Um, because of, uh, of, of life experiences that, you know what I mean? Being in the infantry yeah. and all the training you've done and, and I've traveled even alone and I've had my own like, uh, like sketchy experiences traveling alone. Oh, and, I bet. Um, oh yeah. That's <laughs> like, yeah. Egypt, like you name it anyway. But... <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, yeah. but wait, wait on a side note really quick. Um, so always a critical thinker, a critical thinker since you were young, did you drive your teachers nuts? You know, with, with that sort of thing? No, were you talk- actually some some i probably did oh sorry i keep on cutting you off no 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 you're good you're good you're good but you know it, it's because it was a smaller like area i think where luckily like like a large a majority of my my education took place yeah my teachers loved me and i hate saying that because like another brag but like i i was interested in 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 the in, in the subjects and uh and i was motivated and uh like it was an area where you know what i mean like not a lot of people like really interested in the subjects but like like what like i was so genuinely interested in school and, and, and I, and it, yeah, I was always a nerd, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. So I, know, no, speaking. I, I get that because I come from a, 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 a lot of teachers in my family and you're absolutely right. When, when a lot of the class isn't engaged, the most engaged student is going to be the one they focus on. And even though you're asking a lot of questions, it's like, oh no, no, I'd rather have that person asking me questions than to have these zombies just stare at me all day. <laughs> no, that's great. That's awesome. And it makes sense. Of course you didn't drive them nuts. It didn't, didn't even occur to me. It's like, no, you were the one that's like. You were the one that was the go-getter, obviously, you know, so that, that's awesome. Um, uh, real quick, uh, crap, crap, crap. I didn't want to lose the momentum on this. All right. So, so keep going. So you're a critical thinker. You're in the, um, you're doing, uh, by the way, I, I'm sorry, another side note, but you're in the military, right? Which thrives on following orders and not doing your own independent thinking. Oh, not in the special forces. <laughs> No, no, no I, yeah, it's like, no, these, these are your orders. You do those orders. I mean, did, and obviously you wouldn't have gone as far as you had if you, if you would have been questioning everything. So what you were quietly biting your tongue and a lot of stuff and just doing the research on your own. Uh, surprisingly, no, I, I've always been fairly like vocal. It's just, I don't know why it was like tolerated. Maybe because I was a woman, I'm one of the only, like, uh, especially like the only one in the infantry as, as an officer, but also like one of the only ones like in, in battle group or, or whatever. So maybe it was more entertaining and that I wasn't seen as a threat when I was talking about all this weird stuff. But sure. I, I have disobeyed unlawful orders before and I've even done it like on deployment, like over the radio and I didn't want to. It's just that like, I've always been a person where, you know, I, I believe that there's a creator. I believe there's a God. I believe in karma. I believe in all that stuff. And uh, and I believe that we have a role to play a lot of people and, and, and we have a hard role to play, but to be very informed before you do anything that can cause, you know, massive, like, you know, suffering or, or, or people to die. Right. And so even being familiar with Afghanistan and, and cultural uh, celebrations and things, things like that, you know what I mean? Like it gives you a better understanding of the area. And so like, if you hear, like a Eid's, you know what I mean? Or a celebration. You don't think it's, you know, people shooting at you, you know what I mean? And like, you know, you know, it's a celebration. And, and so the more informed you are uh, as well, I would say um, benefits you, you and other, you, you and other people. And that's why I'm so adv- like uh, vocal about this because I, I've served with really brave warriors, like people that like literally have died. People I've loved, like I, that I've carried their medal and beret in a Chinook during ramp ceremonies. I've been to multiple ramp ceremonies and 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 uh, funerals at home, and people that are still serving that I that I that I work with or communicate with on a daily basis, people that have even lost their legs, double triple amputees included, and uh, and it's infuriating to me that we are lied to at, at the level that we are, and it's gotten so much worse in the last eight years in Canada, yeah. and, well, internationally as well, but like just the level of deceit, and they don't take back what they say that elicits emotional responses in people, gets people engaged in this pro-war narrative, and it's a proxy war that's being pushed by lobbyists, and right. it's like, you know what, we've lost good people because of people that are not even a tenth of the of the character and and the decency and the uh, all that other stuff as of people that we have lost because of lies and I just gotcha. I don't know I'm rambling again but it just fires no, me up. <laughs> no 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 it's no it's good that people know your your opinion on this stuff I mean I've, I've talked to a number of guests that they don't really share much about themselves at all and it's awesome no seriously it adds to your credibility love it I love it um uh I may may later just on on a side note. I may ask for some pictures if you got any military pictures lying around. Just just to not 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 for credibility's sake, just to show off. It's like, oh yeah. No, I, no. I have a few. 
And, uh, and the thing is like when you're like, because it was like pre 2016, like pre Snapchat and like all that other stuff, you know what I mean? So like, I, I guess nowadays I probably have like multiple albums of, of photos and I, I do have like a few in on deployment and, uh, and, uh, other areas, but I can't give you anything when I was at the Hill because. Oh, no, 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 it's totally fine. Absolutely fine. <laughs> No, no, and, and trust me, you're using enough lingo. Nobody could fake it. What, what you've been rattling off so far. I've talked to enough military people. When we were like doing early on, uh, one of our early guys was a Sparrow missile instru instructor for the U.S. Yes. Navy, and people didn't believe him. They're like, not absolutely not him. And I'll be damned if not only did he share a video when he was being deployed to his uh, amphibious ship, the uh, Iwo Jima. You know, from from the helicopter showing, you know, showing the ship, showing him, showing the ship, showing him. But he also did something I never got in trouble for. It, and I was really surprised where he actually took a video absolutely dead silent from inside the Sparrow missile uh, training room, you know, which is basically a gymnasium with um, with spare with fake Sparrow missile systems, you know, bolted onto the floor. Right. And you could hear like the humming of the lights. It was so quiet. And he's like showing around, showing him. And then really quietly, he grabs a cocktail napkin, you know, because it was like a snack bar. And he writes with like a wax marker, Mark Sargent on it. And, and, <laughs> and he goes flat earth clues. And he shows and he, and he turns it off. It's like, how do you get away with that? Nobody from the Defense Department contacted me. It's like, wow, lucky. Fun fact is uh, I actually know people that are still serving in the special forces, I will never say their names. That yeah. dad, that you know, the view is flat. Awesome. That's yeah. that's awesome. Um, okay, so let's let's you know what let's segue into. And I it communicate because, with yeah. them on a regular basis too, right? But they can't say that's, anything. That's, and by the way, with phones, uh, in certain areas, you absolutely, especially like uh, like in operational secure areas, on, on certain bases, yeah. phones have to be shut off and basically in the vehicle. Yeah. And, uh, and and not even allowed to be on your person when you're at work or or at meetings. And then there's areas where there's vaulted access and like codes that you have to put in. So like there's no there's no way. But, uh, <laughs> gotcha. but I do have photos of me like on deployment. So like literally not. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, send, send, and, uh, send, I, I, I like those ones. <laughs> send some great shots. Uh, if, if you get a chance, we'll just, just, for, just for fun, just yeah. because you know, people, people might ask, although oh, seriously, if any trolls are listening to this and they're, you're questioning the credibility, it's like, dude, if she's lying, she's one of the finest liars I've ever heard. Um, <laughs> yeah, and look, I, I talk certificates and my, and my, my, my literally like on my wall, like, I know. <laughs> Oh yeah, there you go. Perfect. And there's a okay. lot of certificates that are like underneath and like in other things. Oh I no, got... no, no, I, I have no doubt. No, if anyone that's in f 15 years like like you, and again, a go getter like you, I'm sure you've. Well, that's the truth. Because people still like uh, even even now, like they still uh, say like like they're like you 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 went in the infantry. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like because they say that in the, in America, like uh, like women aren't in combat arms. Like I'm I cool, but I'm Canadian, so. Like, yeah. you know, like do a little bit of research. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on. Uh, I mean, there are a number of other countries. I mean, yeah, America is one of the few exceptions. I mean, look at freaking Israel. Yeah. You know, where, where not only are you required, but yeah, women, you're required too. And now, <laughs> yes. uh, granted, I do agree. You know, there was a movie um, some years ago with Demi Moore, uh, G.I. Jane, which I'm sure you've watched at least once or twice in your life. Oh, I've been called G.I. Jane. Oh, I am <laughs> sure you've been called G.I. Jane at least once or twice. You guys have never seen it. Excellent movie. Uh, yeah. Viggo Mortensen as the uh, as the antagonist, evil, you know, instructor, uh, you know. Which is really such a far far cry from you know the Lord of the Rings. You know he was the king in Lord of the Rings. It's like holy smokes, that guy's got range. Anyway, but what I thought was interesting in there was that little quote where he goes where he he was criticizing the Israelis and saying yeah they screwed up. And the problem is, and I get it, it's human nature, and you know a lot about human nature, which is if a woman falls in combat, there are a number of men that will make unnecessary risks to protect yeah. that woman in combat, which they wouldn't do for a guy. And at that point, they put, you know, the, the mission potentially in jeopardy and you have to either condition people to be not that way, which is why the Americans is like, yeah, we can't do it. So, but and they have the numbers, you know, so, they can, oh. uh, they can, you know, like maybe maybe in the next you know, year or so, like there they, there's a possibility of being a draft. You know what I mean? So, like, uh, I, I don't know. And women may be involved in that. So who knows? I disagree I, with like forced. Uh, do you think a, do you think a draft would work in Canada right now? Do you think you could pull it off? I. I don't, I don't want that to happen. <laughs> That's what I'm no, trying no. to I, do, yeah. I mean, do you reception like down here? I can't speak for for you we, guys. We did even it for though. World War One, and we did it for World War Two. And so, if there's a yeah, world war, this, it would be, this who knows? that is. This isn't then, you know, World War the, the World War II to now. There was a lot of ground has covered been been covered since then, as oh, you yes. know. It's, this hoping. is not. 
I mean, yeah, I mean, we were a lot, I'm not going to say simpler, but in America, come on, Pearl Harbor gets hit, and then literally a million guys volunteer. They didn't even have to be drafted. It's like, oh, sign me up, send me over there. And now, were there American ships that actually pushed out off the coast of Pearl Harbor, like uh, the of Hawaii, like, and, and was, was possibly known that, that there was going to be an attack? Oh, okay. First off, who are you talking to here? Look, I, I know. I know. <laughs> I've got, I've got an opinion. I have said on many, and I know you haven't listened to all my stuff, but I have said on many a time that, and it's an old conspiracy, very yeah. old conspiracy, but it's too, it was too big for most Americans, which was if Pearl Harbor, you got to understand, and I, in fact, I did a video on this, oh God, years ago, where I said, you don't understand what, what happened before Pearl Harbor. The war was won over there. Germany had it. It was over. I mean, Russia was in flames. They were using UK as target practice. It, Europe was already conquered. They basically went, moved into France. You know, they were like, oh, no, no, we, this is ours. It's all ours. <laughs> and hadn't, and the, the, the story was, which why, if you've ever watched, I don't know how much TV you watch or, or shows you've watched over the years, but there was an alternative history version of this called The Man in the High Castle, which was, you know, what if it was a series, really well done. If Germany won the war, what happened? I can tell you exactly what happened because the, the plans were not secret. It, there were so many German people that were living in the States at the time, for example. You know, there were a lot of German immigrants. Oh, that yes. the, point, the point was, no, no, they weren't going to fire a shot at America. America had nothing to do with it. They were just going to take Europe. They were going to send their envoys over, go to D.C. and say, yeah, we'd like to fly dual flags. And then eventually everybody would be speaking German. That was that was the plan. It was easy. Uh, America was not was supposed to be taken without firing a shot because nobody knew about anything that was happening in, in Europe. And then coincidentally, you know, the Americans had to come up with an idea. It's like, what do you do? And it's one of the oldest tricks in the books. And, and I don't want to ramble, but I got to get this point out, which is one of the oldest tricks in the books. Like women, mothers don't like letting their kids fight for things, but they, but fighting for revenge. Oh, that's easy. Yes. And, and as you walk up, everyone's done it when they're kids, you probably haven't, or maybe you have, where you walk up behind somebody, you smack them in the back of the head. And when they spin around, you point at your best friend. <laughs> and that is that is something you can do on a, ma on a micro level and a macro level. You bomb something, you blame somebody else. If you have even remotest evidence, you can pin it on them. It's like, oh, yeah, let's go after them. So, you know, when Pearl Harbor, oh, yeah, sorry, short version after all that, was, did Pearl, was Pearl Harbor done deliberately to get us into the war? Of course it was. Because I if agree. <laughs> I did a video on that as well. It's it's uh, but yeah. It doesn't happen. We're all speaking German. There's no more French classes. There's no more Spanish classes. It's all German at that point. And, even, I, I, and actually, even in Germany, and and uh, the name is escaping me, but I just talked about uh, this on a video as well. But there was a uh, it was a communist um, man who was 24 years old, and uh, during the the Reichstag fire, which is uh, which is German for for Parliament, but uh, yeah. during the Reichstag fire. Um, yeah. Uh, around World War II, like it was blamed, like that fire was blamed on this this guy that was uh, allegedly a, a communist. He could have been yeah. a communist, you know what I mean? Because yeah, there's yeah, fall yeah. guys everywhere. But it, like, but but there's archive data that I've looked at and and court records that actually show that even like an SS Nazi soldier admitted that he had actually driven this individual, and it was escaping me. But I have a video on this. But he yeah. drove him to the Reichstag, and the fire had already been set. It was an yeah. impossibility for him to upset it. And then yep. after that, what happened? There was all these measures and policies implemented. You know what I mean? And more and more free. Freedoms taken away from Germany, and then and, and Adolf Hitler exploited that, right? So, like, I believe that that was also possibly something that was staged oh. and planned internally, just like USS Liberty, just like Northwoods, which luckily didn't happen. But the USS Liberty, you know what I mean? Like, that was a terrible event. And uh, oh yeah, and January oh, yeah. It, 6th and <laughs> false false flags, and we got to be careful when we say that because false. Oh, the, 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 that's right. False, false flag. Well, no, no. You can say the term false flag. You just can't say that something was a false flag. Oh, allegedly. That, false that involves something recent. And by that, I mean, you know, like towers in a big American city on the East Coast, you know, that sort of thing. But you're absolutely right. Um, I think I think we pronounce it Reichstag fire, but whatever. Oh, sorry. Good. Thanks for. But no, 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 no. I've got I've got a German family. It's totally fine. Uh, we're not offended. The um uh but but you're absolutely right. That was one of the classic false flags, which is Nazism doesn't even happen unless the that fire is set and you blame the the communists and then you start doing all sorts of fun stuff. But even God, come on, I, every American war we've ever done, uh, you know, we blew up our our own battleship, the Maine, and then blamed it on Spain and just start taking stuff. Uh, you know, we we let the Alamo get taken. And then it's like we took the you know those worthless pieces of real estate called Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California. Just took it. Yeah, worthless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was worthless, which is now an adjusted dollar, something along the lines of six trillion, seven trillion dollars, just in real estate. 
it was one of the best investments ever. And any corporate person will say, oh, yeah, that was a great return on investment. Absolutely do that. I mean, you only lost 200 guys. And unfortunately, I'm not picking on infantry or army. But as you know, the pawns go yes. first, right? Yep. The pawns <laughs> are sacrificed for the greater good. It happens. It happens all the time. That's okay. Life. You know, and the dogs of war wouldn't want it any other way for themselves either, right? And so, like, even people dying in battle, like, a lot of people do see that as honorable still, yeah. you know, and say, you know, things like Tilt al Hala. Like, uh, there's a there's a closer connection to the dark side of the world that people try to run away from that that we appreciate more, I guess, also. And Yes. And, so and people uh, think that we're ignorant, you know what I mean? Or idiots or, or, or puppets, you know what I mean? For, right. or, or, or people still in. And so I, I get, I understand and I can acknowledge and, and, and that's fair. That's a fair yeah. argument. But I do believe that there, we still need a warrior class in all, in all societies, especially first world ones to protect and defend against intruders, right? And yep. invaders or whatever. And every species in the world has, uh, you know, their like certain alpha males or warriors within their, within their species that yep. protect and, and defend. And so it's no different with humans. Yeah. And unfortunately, because uh, and again, I got to blame the Americans for a lot of stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love America. I really do. Oh, by the way, on a, on a quick, another quick side note, I lived in Canada for a year. Um, no I lived, yeah, I did. I lived in uh, Victoria of all places, oh, nice. and I, which was weird because I grew up in the Seattle area. I didn't even know Victoria existed, what? meaning uh, because most Americans think, oh, okay, well, it gets to Vancouver and then it just stops. And because that's the furthest west you go, there's no, there's no more Canada. There's just some trees past past <laughs> Vancouver. It's like, no, there's a whole other thing out there. It's called yeah. Victoria. They've got, they've got, you know, wonderful buildings. The Royals visit there on a regular basis. And it's like, wow, yeah, I lived in Victoria for a year, so it was very, very cool. And did I called. Did you do the uh, West Coast Trail? No. I did. It's so good. I highly recommend it. It's like nice. 25 kilometers. You can do it over multiple days. And uh, it's uh, incredible, beautiful. I, oh, it is beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Also, by the way, Vancouver Island uh, is the highest. You probably didn't know this, or maybe you did. The highest concentration of Bigfoot sightings in the entire world is on Vancouver Island. I did not I, know that. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Oregon. I thought it was yeah, Washington was State. Sure. And it's like, and no, it's like you see all the, the dots. It's like, holy smoke. Well, and that makes sense because there's nobody lives in Vancouver Island. I mean, once you leave Victoria and you're going north, there's nothing there. I know, I'm right? embarrassed not knowing that because like one of my friends, like her her boyfriend is obsessed with Bigfoot and like all of those <laughs> things. And like I'm I'm surprised that I do not know that. I what because look because of them, not because of research. I lived in the Northwest for a big chunk of my life. I had no idea until I got up there. Oh, and by the way, um, sometimes yes, I, I'm not making fun. I do slip into uh, I don't call it Canada sometimes, I call it Canada. And that's because <laughs> Americans live in America. Canadians <laughs> live in yeah, Canada. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's weird, eh? Yeah, <laughs> don't don't you know? <laughs> don't you so, what's what's that a boot? Um, and I know that's not you guys. And seriously, Quebec. By the way, I love the fact again being over in the BC side. I love the fact that everybody in Canada has to take two years of span of uh, Spanish, <laughs> has to take two years of French because of you guys, because of, of Quebec. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. Which is the whole other thing. Uh, sorry, I don't get into it. It was like it's part of the psyops too. It's part of the control and the the the, 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 the excuse me the, the vision, vision well, narrative, that, right? Every that, continent. Oh, sorry. Well, that and the the uh, the French and the British kind of gave up fighting when the you know when the when the French basically won America for us, right? We paid the French army. We had nothing to do with it. It was seriously that we we took our own Declaration of Independence. Like you paid the French military to win the war. It's like you had nothing to do with us. And then they got to Canada and they're like. Yeah, uh, we'll we'll just take all this, French. You can take that. Nobody fought about anything up there because like, nobody lived up there at the time. I mean, there were there were native Canadians. Yeah, native Canadians. Anyway, well, there could have there could be advanced civilizations that well, yeah, so, the area many many moons ago. Seriously, will you get me started on that? Then I'm going to go into um, you know, the great one of the greatest hidden UFO things that nobody talks about, which was there was some really great speculation that the only reason that Germany all of a sudden woke up one morning and decided, oh, hey, you know what? Let's take the whole world because <laughs> that's a thing, right? You know, the Roman Empire took time to get there. Germany, it's like, you know, they had this little sp spot of land. It's like, yeah, I think we can do this, right? But, <laughs> but the point was, is that there was a rumor that in the early 30s, a Roswell type thing crashed into the soft dirt of Germany and didn't get destroyed. And they just reverse engineered everything as best they could, which is how they got jets, you know, and, and their rifles are so much better and their tanks are so much better. You know, they just reverse engineered as best they could. And that's when all of a sudden, what, you know, the, the military guys are going, yeah, you know what? Nobody's got this stuff. I think we can win it. <laughs> and, and come on, they almost did. 
if it wasn't for Pearl Harbor. All right. Anyway, enough digression. So let's get into because you and I are on the same page of a lot of stuff, and I'm I'm sure we'll we'll bounce back and forth on this. All right. Fast forward to okay. So you did Canadian military for a long time, highly you know, decorated. You were in leadership positions. You you served over in the Middle East. Uh, Afghanistan, very, very cool. Should we, should we get into really quick, you want to confirm or deny the rumors that uh, Af- Afghanistan was the, the greatest agricultural endeavor the, Ameri- the United States ever came up with? I don't know about that. No, no, meaning, meaning uh, we, well, let's just, we can say it, it's fine. We, we moved, we figured out the poppy fields grow really well in Afghanistan. Ever heard? I'll, I'll say... Um... Uh, with Afghanistan for like, like a few decades, like in the seventies, they, they were actually a little bit more thriving. And, uh, and I've, it, this is interesting. I don't know how, like, again, like, the, like I do research, but you know, you can get things wrong, but like a lot of old accounts from farmers and locals from areas, like from, from, from historical accounts, yeah. um, they were seeing that even as early as the seventies and eighties, uh, they were getting targeted, even their crops and that there were, you know, people from Denmark and other areas that were possibly dropping, you know, uh, either chemicals and bugs, you know, like ticks and parasites and stuff like that on their crops, which made their crops like not able to to grow or, or, or be yielded. And so huh. poppies were the alternative because it was easier to grow in the soil that was like, you know, damaged and and like not, not the same amount of uh, nutrients and, and stuff like that within the soil. Right. And uh, and also part of the connected drug. I don't know how much I could say on here, but no, no, again, this, say, is, hey, this, is, this is my own interpretation of my own research, but like sure. the CIA and other uh, government entities inter- internationally were heavily involved in Afghanistan and some like drug things that were going sure. on even, even there. Right. And so uh, I believe that, you know, that could possibly be a reason, the resources that were there. And yeah. of course, uh, like instability in the Middle East, uh, you know, Lockheed Martin and Raytheon and other co- companies, you know, getting, a, th- th- there's a lot of profit in war. And I believe that this was an opportunity to yep. exploit people, destabilize an area, blame it on other people, and then just keep this perpetual war going on for, like I was saying, lobbyists that have shares and stocks in these companies yeah. that work in Senate, that work in cabinet, that are fucking... Anyways, I won't say it, but they're yeah. No, 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 you're, uh, you're spot. You're spot on. You're absolutely. You're absolutely right. Um, there was but it's a like left and right part of the same bird, right? Like everyone thinks that like, there's. But anyway, I felt bad for Eisenhower because he's still my favorite president of all time. Uh, because he was the last president with any power because he was a retired, you know, five star general. You know, led NATO during the the, the World War II. And it's like, yeah, let's make him president, right? And. He, you know, he was the one that did that famous speech at the end where he's like, look, he basically apologizes. Look, we've, it had, we, we kind of built this thing called the military. He was the one that coined it, the military industrial complex. And he's like, I'm leaving, but you buy, you might want to keep an eye on this because this is bad. You know, basically I've created this Frankenstein monster. I don't think you're going to be able to stop it, but goodbye. <laughs> and that was basically what yeah. I said. But there was a wonderful documentary, and it's part of that. Uh, um, if you ever get a chance to see it, I'll, I'll send you a link afterwards called Why We Fight. And there was this great line by one of our military analysts. And he's going, look, he goes, right, currently as it stands, war has a 20 to 30% profit margin. He goes, when you get a return on investment that high, you're going to see a lot more of it. Because that's just how money works. It's like, look, w- w- you, you don't want to stop the money train. So what can we do? So America, you know, it's like, it's like, where, where can we start scrapping up? You know, where can, who can we fight or what sort of thing can we manufacture to keep the machine moving? And it's like, yeah, I I get, I get it. Money, money does, you know, crops period. And they, and they say it, they admit it. They say that they don't factor in, you know what I mean? The societal impact, you know, to, to like their, 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 their dealings and stuff like that. They have no, they don't care for them. It is financial and money is their religion. And I'm yep. not saying everyone, but I'm saying there are specific people, you know, that are that are part of like the wealthy groups that own these companies that are, you know, that have their hands in in in, in internationally, and it's the same people right. that go to Bohemian Grove, and you know, and yeah, yeah, and, and I, those yep. meetings. Yep. I, I, again, I I get it. I, look, I've I've been I've been uh, guilty of it as well, which is look, I do believe in the greater good. I do, I, and I do believe in that sometimes the ends justify the means. However, the general public, you know, suffers in, in certain, and sometimes, you know, what, what ends are you willing to go to, you know, to, to, to get what you want? Uh, I, let me throw one real quick and then we'll get into flatter stuff. Cause we've been going on for like 45 minutes and people are like, are they ever going to talk about flatter? <laughs> yes, we will. We absolutely will. But this is the first time you, you, you've met Dawn. I want you to get to know her. I want you to let you, you know, kind of bounce stuff off. So it's like, look, she's on the same page. She's on our team. 
Yeah, and yes. I'm sorry, by the way, you weren't at Flattoberfest. Oh, you totally missed it. You should have been there. Been I know. Been... I would love to go to future ones for sure. Well, the next one I don't think is going to be in Vegas. It might be in Phoenix. We'll see. We, we, oh, I, right now, I, I think Phoenix. it's slow. Well, because you want it's in October, so you want it to be warm. And uh, you don't want the weather to be decent. You know, you don't want to do it in like October. You don't want to be like in South Texas during an ice storm. Or anyway, um, what was I getting at? Crap. Crap. Had... Possibly yeah, yeah, we might as well just jump. No, 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 no. We're good. Ends, ends just find the means, which is really quick. And I, I talked this to a French group I was dealing with just recently because we were talking because it, it tied in and you'll get this, which is ends just find the mean. It was an exclusive conspiracy that only I came up with, but. It, but people will get it, and that is the Panama Canal. People are like Panama Canal. That's boring. Who cares? It's a freaking ditch that you dug between, you know, the you know Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean. Who the hell cares? I go, okay. Here's the deal. When, well, you, well, yeah. It's I mean, it's a it's a, it's a it's, there's a reason why it took took what it did to get built because people were highly motivated to get this thing done. So the the here's the thing with the Panama Canal. When when you build like a dam or a series of roads, any big construction pro project, men and women are going to die from construction accidents. It just happens. Things tip over, people fall, things happen. And like during like we built like a the Hoover Dam, if you've ever heard of it, uh, and I think we lost like seventy people. And this was back in the thirties. That's quite a but few. Even the Hoover Dam was it built or was it there? And were these pictures oh, staged? No, or people who were a whole <laughs> other thing. We won't get into that right now. No, no, we're not. Sorry. We're not starting that road. By the way, appreciate that you're open minded enough to go down that road. Don't go that far off road. Not during this conversation. Okay. Okay, but fine. I get you. I know. I know where you are. So the Hoover Dam, we lost like seventy guys. Right. It's like, it's like, yeah, it makes sense in the thirties or whenever it was built. Do you know how many people we lost building the Panama Canal? The better part of 6,000. Oh, you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of guys. And then, and you're thinking, wow, that's a lot. But then I say, you know what they died of? They died of malaria and yellow fever. And you're saying, oh, wow, well, that happens. You're freaking in Central America. That's just par for the course. It's like, oh yeah. And, and, and then you'd follow up with, uh, cause anti-conspiracy people. It's like, well, it's not like you knew they were going to die. It's like, oh no, no, no. The Americans knew absolutely they were going to die. Why? Because we didn't start the Panama Canal. You know who did? The French. The French started it in the 1800s. They came, which was amazing to me. It's like, how are they going to manage that? They're freaking over in France. It's like, really? But I mean, whoever claims it, claims it, right? You just set up a garrison, you protect it. It's like, no, it's yours. So the France are, are going at it, and but they were losing all sorts of guys. You know how many men? They lost 22,000. So, so many guys that that Paris started revolting because there's a lot of mothers. It was like, eh, my son isn't coming home. I wouldn't be upset. <laughs> oh, yeah. So they were protesting to the point where France, at, by the end of eight, the 18, almost going into 1900, they just gave up, put the shovels and the steam powered tractors away. And they said, screw it. We're just leaving our tools. You're done. America comes in. It's like, hey, <laughs> someone half finished a job down here. But then, was, then, then, of course, they're working out the details. It's like, OK, how many men are we going to lose? Because we're going to lose a bunch of guys. So we came up with insect repellent. We came up with mosquito netting. And it's like, but how many men were we willing to lose? And it's like, I knew full well. It's like, oh, probably some round number, like 10,000. It's like, OK, we could probably lose like 10,000 and then. Uh, you know, before people start losing their minds. Remember, these is this is all civilian. This isn't military. This is an Army Corps of Engineers. Right. So, okay, Mark, what's the but point? That's what I mean. Yeah, it's not like yeah. Sorry. So, <laughs> so the point is, the point is, it's like okay, where's the conspiracy come in? The conspiracy conspiracy comes in because we didn't tell any of these guys. That's how it comes in. So you're in the recruiting office. It's like, oh, what engineering project do you want to do? Well, hey, that Panama Canal sounds warm and nice. Yeah, you know what? Sign you up. We're not going to tell you that there was a one in eight chance that you were going to die. Or if you were going with a bunch of your buddies, you're not all coming back, right? That's where a conspiracy comes in. The, the, now, so, yes, because it's not informed consent by any means either, right? Like, like, and I joined the military, I signed the contract. Yes, absolutely. You, you know, like I like. <laughs> but 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 in this case, but is it a conspiracy? Meaning they were willing to lose, as you know, pawns, right? Are you willing to lose five thousand men to get the 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 military choke point of the world? Yeah, of course you would. Uh, and by the way, you're charging people. It's the most exp expensive toll road in the world, right? It's been used, you know, for a lot. And we made tons and tons of money off of it. And do, did the ends justify the means? Probably. You know, if you ask any men, people in power in the United States, yes. But that's your very definition of conspiracy. They, a lot of people died. You didn't tell them they were going to die. It was for the greater good. Therefore, it's like, hey. So, and now anyway. there's ways to like, mitigate things more too. Like even in Canada with like the uh, the railway system, like we lost a lot of people and a lot of people coming in from other countries and as part of forced labor or mm -hmm. what we call indigenous communities within Canada now, like also being used and given barely any money 
or right. any food to survive right in, in austere low conditions and uh even in our northern regions for mines and 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 and, and it's just a uh, greedy people yeah. that are selfish that, that that really don't care about people you know that are actually helping them and like things with like malaria or health conditions like even just giving like just proper nutrient nu nutrition and like yeah. waste management in areas could have probably mitigates mitigated but again like hindsight right yeah and, and and if it was me like with the panama thing i'd be like you know what i'd if i if i was in that position of power if i was part of the illuminati or the world order or whoever it is uh <laughs> i would probably be a little more generous you know which which we do sometimes which is like look you know you lost me people in Panama compensate their families compensate them well you know make sure that it was for it wasn't for nothing don't do yeah. it on the cheap if you're going to lose somebody at least make their life seem yeah. somewhat worthwhile you know worthwhile okay enough humming and hawing let's get into it so military and by the way during during all this uh i noticed that you as we as when as you left the military, which you were big, big into, and that, by the way, when you were rattling off your uh, your physical prowess, I don't think people understand. You're a big physical fitness nut. Hence the thumbnail, by the way. If you guys hadn't noticed the thumbnail uh, thumbnail yet, you were you were always into that. Even when you were out of the military, you're still you're still going to the gym on a regular basis. What what's the deal there? You got you, you have some sort of problem. <laughs> I've been told that. Yeah. Um, I just, I, honestly, it's something that I, I've been working out in, in fitness, like my whole life, like what, yeah. like Lewis said, and, um, I, I can be fairly competitive, but there's also people within, uh, I don't know. It's like, it's also, uh, it keep it makes tasks easier. Like, especially yeah. being in the infantry was very physically demanding. So like, even before getting in the infantry, even in grade six, like I, I literally wrote on my, uh, my new year, like my, uh, my, my end of school book, the, what is that called? The grad book or what do we call it? The, anyway, I forget what it's the called. The annual, the annual. And uh, I said that I wanted yearbook. to join the uh, the army. Yeah. Pardon me. Yearbook. Yearbook. Yes. Um, and so in my yearbook from grade six, I literally said that I wanted to join the army, and um, and I enjoyed being being like I loved going in the woods and and foraging, and I loved hunting and fishing even at a very young age, and I and I liked fitness. And people within my family, like my brother, he uh, he inspired me honestly with fitness. And my uncles were in football, and uh, and uh, yeah, and so. I uh, was good at it. And so with track and field and stuff like that as well in school, it's stuff that I won awards. And and so I liked it. And then even with sports teams, I was always like, like, the only girl or one of the only girls. And I was even, even in grade nine, I was on the grade 11 men's volleyball team as a setter. And that's random because I'm like five foot four, you know what I mean? I'm pretty short. And, uh, and so, <laughs> so even, even as a, and, and even with badminton and other sports, like my brother was, was high level with uh with with hawk with 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 ball hockey or floor hockey whatever you want to call it but also badminton and volleyball yeah. and uh a coach and so he actually coached me a lot as well and so like i i had a, an unfair advantage i guess and i used it and uh and then competed in ultra marathons through my my like in my career as well and and worked out we, we got paid to work out so for me it's like there's no freaking excuse not to work out if you're in garrison and not deployed but even then to, to work out because uh because you're paid to work out and be fit, right? right. And like, you need to be right. there for your, your fire team partner and be able to pick them up. And so I've even fireman carried a guy that's uh, like, I still talk to a <laughs> big Rick is what we call him, but like, this guy's like six foot five, like over 300 pounds. And he was in my platoon. And so as, as the officer in the platoon, after like you do BFTs or 13 kilometer rock tack marches, the officer yeah. uh, is, is responsible to uh, fireman carry at the time, the heaviest person in the platoon, right. Just to show that you can do it. And like, and so like his hands and his feet were like basically dangling off me when I was carrying it. anyway, but, uh, Oh my God. <laughs> but I, but being short too, though, I could put a lot of more, like, I guess, weight on myself without like, uh, with that anyway. <laughs> yeah. and, no, uh, no, no. I mean, you, you gotta have pretty strong legs to pull that off. I do. I, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, good. uh, so I've done like multiple like rucksack marches and it, again, being in the infantry is very physically demanding with the rucksacks, like sometimes being like friggin' like my weight or more, you know, <laughs> and, uh, carrying them for like extended periods for patrols and stuff like that. So I had to be fit. And, uh, in order to do that, I had to take time out of my own as well and make sure that I was properly like eating properly, working out. And, um, and then even after I left, I still do things like I'm a use of force instructor as well. And so you have to be physically fit. You know what I mean? If you want to be respected in my community too. So like, sure. I know this is, like, sounds awful, but like we kind of judge people, like if you're use of force or if you're like a military guy or infantry and, and you're, and you're like, not healthy you know what i mean like we kind of oh like, no 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 of course. no of course no that doesn't sound bad at all look come on people judge the book by the i cover love challenging all myself so so i've done like ultra marathons i've done adventure races i've done primitive survival stuff in the woods 
naked with a like a survival item, you know what I mean, for over multiple days, like not just for Discovery Channel, but like for like on my own, like for fun and and uh, yeah, I just do weird things. But it's all like very physically demanding things. But it's because it's fun to me. I don't know, it's weird. <laughs> No. And I've done bodybuilding competitions as well. So I'm, I'm actually certified for a, to be a coach um, because also being in the infantry as a, as a platoon commander, we were responsible for, for, for putting together training plans and fitness plans and stuff like that and implementing them. Right. And uh, so I felt like also like I should be knowledgeable on nutrition and working out and, and anatomy and stuff like that. So I don't know. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Seriously. No, all, all great stuff. Love it. Love it all. all. Love it all. Okay. So let's get into it. When, when did you, you No, know, let's, we'll, we've already talked about enough general conspiracies. When, when did, and I, I've listened to enough of your stuff that you have, uh, you know, you, you've got a, a digital virtual take on this as well. So, but we'll, we'll back up. What was the first thing that got you into uh flat earth? Did you just run into by accident? Did somebody talk to you about it? Did you just wake up one day and had it in your head? What happened? I would say that I, I actually have the, um, it's, I think it's what are, I, I don't want to like put, put other people's names out there, but I actually have a no, flat you can. map that I, I, I bought a, so Archaics, he has this photo behind, like a, a picture behind him on some of his videos. Sure. And again, I, I, I don't agree with everything he says either, just to be clear, like I don't want to like slam him at all. He's very smart, but there's yeah. a lot, there's some things I just don't agree with. But anyways, it is what it is. But I have the same flat earth map and I've had that since 2011. And gotcha. so, uh, and, and for me, it was more about like the, uh, like I still wasn't connecting the dots. And so I would say probably around 2016, 2017, That's about right. uh, because of the community I was in, like yeah. on Signal and Telegram with like again, with all levels of government, you know, or, you know, uh, retired people internationally, right. I, I was getting a lot of content. So I have people too that I know that are covert law enforcement, uh, people that were like, again, all levels. Yeah. And, um, and so I was getting a lot of information anyways. And so. I was sent um, the, uh, the Lost History of Advanced Civilizations or The Lost History of Flat Earth. It's a really long documentary. It's like over six hours long. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I was uh, and so that was sent to me by someone that's still in the special forces. <laughs> wow. And so and so this is what I mean in our in our community, like people are trying to share information and uh, it's getting pushed back down. Right. And so the, and that's why, like, anyway. I won't get into Canadian politics or anything like that, but we have people in certain positions that are there just as puppets and muppets. I have no idea what they're talking about or doing. Of they're course. so whole, like woefully underqualified, yep. and uh, and they're really making things really anyway bad here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and so so I looked at the uh, at that documentary uh, or wherever it was. It was and uh, and um, I don't mean to plug other videos, but it was it was good enough because there was a point in it where it had said that. Um, like even just one thing, one fact that was that was disproven out of all the theories that just made every every other one fall fall like a house of cards or whatever. And right. I was like, holy shit! And I'm like, I've been questioning this and this, and I know this is bullshit. You know what I mean? All this stuff, but I'm like, in my head, I was still like not putting two and two together. That like that's it means like A plus B equals C. You know what I mean? And then it was like after watching that, I was like, yeah, it's 100% flat. How, like how can it not be? You know, this is a, I was going more with the uh, electromagnetism ma ma stuff with like, Tesla and Walter Russell and Ken Wheeler right. and, and these people and correcting some of their stuff as well that I think is incorrect. And then, uh, and then, it, yeah. And so I like, uh, there's no, like, uh, it's a fact. <laughs> you you just jumped on it. So how long, how long did it take you when, when you, between the first time that you started connecting the dots and the time where you made that statement to yourself? It's like, oh yeah, yeah, it's flat. Couple weeks, Luckily, couple I, had, I had already done some like I had already gone down some rabbit holes. Yeah. And so like the moon landings, I had already known by that point that those were faked like for a couple of years. And that's what I mean. Like I was so ignorant. Like, how do I not connect? You know what I mean? Like a whole bunch of different things. And so uh <laughs> by, by the way, thank you by the way for saying that out loud. You you want without me asking, you're one of the few international people outside of this country, which I ask all the time. I say, Why do you think the Americans went to the moon? Why why do you believe that? And oh, you're yeah, like absolutely not. Thank you. No, absolutely not. Oh. And Stanley Kubrick even admitted in multiple videos that it didn't happen, right? So like even with the kid with the Apollo friggin' 11, like rocket oh. or whatever, going in the room, and then he comes out disheveled, yes. and then room 237, and there's 237,000 miles between apparently like Earth and the oh. moon, which is not so true. It's a, did you watch like, the documentary? Did you watch it? The moon, uh, room 237? I, I haven't watched it. I just oh know my that God, you gotta watch it. You gotta, you gotta watch it. <laughs> I'm sure it's full of, yeah. 
the 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 you know the there was a guy basically what happened just you you picked up fragments of it but how that happened was for those of you who don't know who are listening uh, Stanley Kubrick who was accused of doing all the film research for the Apollo program which he did for from sixty three to sixty eight which was he turned into a movie uh, yes. two thousand one a space odyssey. Um, but he regretted it so much because, you know, the, it sounds great to a director, you know, the government writes you a blank check. It's like, oh yeah, we'll give you ungodly amounts of money, but we need to help you fake this. And you can't tell anybody yeah. that by the time he was done, he built in his confession into the Stephen King book, uh, yeah. which was turned into a movie called The Shining. Now, the part you were mentioning, which I love, thank, thank you, by the way, for bringing that up, which was when that kid stood up and he was wearing that Apollo handmade sweater was so telling because it made no sense. It was absolutely glaring because first off, the movie was done in 1980, right? <laughs> Which was 12 years after that freaking mission. Yeah. The kid was only like five, six years old, maybe seven. And it's like, wait, when exactly did his mother knit that? Because, you know, the kid, he would have, she would have knit it, you know, way after the program had been, had been done. So what, and again, the average person. And then and, the, two, the two girls at the end of the hallway, like that represents like the Gemini mission and they're all, like, they look kind of yeah. creepy and scary. So like, that's also showing you like, they're looking at this as well. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. Or the, or the moon room itself. Again, if you seriously, if you've never watched yeah. room three, seven, the doctor. Sure. Yeah, which is everything in that room is fake. Everything in that room, which is, you know, the anagram, the, the door tag, which was uh, room number was an anagram for moon room. And uh, and and again, the beautiful woman in the bathtub, if you ever watched the movie, who turns into a ghoulish nightmare, which is like, yeah, and I get it. I The symbolism is like, oh, yeah, it was a beautiful dream to start. It was like the perfect movie. What director wouldn't say yes. Right. And oh, then it's. Sure. And then he backed out at the end. You know, he was like, oh, I'm, I'm done. I'm not helping you anymore. You can take what I used, but you, I'm not going to help you anymore. And that's why the television footage was so terrible and why the, the, the still photos. The, Stanley Kubrick was such a, a perfectionist. He would have never let the still photos be as perfect as they were. Anyway, anyway. So and even super, with the Apollo, honestly, that's just, really great that you thought the, uh, the Americans were, were sorry. Oh, what? and now, and now, I mean, it's Say ridiculous. It one more time? It's just coming out of India and uh -oh. China, sorry, in Japan with like, their fake moon stuff. I'm just like, oh my God. Hang on, we're, we're buffering for a second. Hang on. Oh, are we good? Uh, we are buffering still, and now we're frozen. Hopefully we don't lose anything. If we have to stitch it together, we will, but we're still recording. All right. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, hang on, hang on. It's just catching up now. Okay. Oof. Wow, there was like 15, 20 seconds there where we were buffering like nobody's business. Uh, and we still might be. You know what I'm going to do? Let me, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to stop this one and then we're going to pick it up where we left off. Okay. So hang, hang tough. We're going to stop recording. Oh, I can still hear you. Wait, oh, you, oh, now you're back. Hang on, let me, let me kill the chat. Can you see me? Yes, yes, I can see you and I can hear you. Okay, can we were buffering see? for like, with at least 30 seconds. I'll have to stitch that together, which is fine. Oh, no. I hope no, 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 it's okay. I mean, I'm sorry. no, 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 we're, we're probably fine. We're okay. But, but so there was a point. So missions with the yeah, moon landings, there's, there's, there's 12 astronauts that have landed allegedly on the moon that have actually yeah. landed there's been moon missions all these other missions but uh from the last i checked there there are 12 astronauts that have landed on the moon and so that's all like allegedly right so like i don't believe in that but what i'm saying is with that that's also owed to like a connection with like the um the symbology that with the yeah. zodiac signs there's 12 zodiac signs and then you got the sun's ecliptical path through the zodiac signs so i believe that the apollo mission like that is the representation of the sun and then, uh, and then 12 astronauts or actronauts, whatever you want to call it, um, yeah. being represented that way. So I don't know, you know, and that's why I actually, I was going to say when I was at RMC, I actually uh, was part of an obstacle course team. Uh, I was like, a, you have like, there's nine men that are selected and one woman and then, uh, and then backups. And, uh, so you have to be incredibly fit to be selected to even do this, uh, obstacle course training stuff. But part of yeah. that. Uh, team was uh, and I won't say his name, but was uh, he's actually an astronaut, like like out of Canada, and someone that I've actually like like I, I was in RMC with, I was on this team with, and so like uh, like uh, and so we were always training together for 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 a couple of years and yeah. and uh, traveling together and uh, and competing and very fit, very smart, but like I mean, if you're an astronaut, like I'm hoping that he 
doesn't sell us out. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, it's tough. And by the way, it, 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 when we stop recording, can you tell me his name or not? Um, I maybe over not even email. Yeah, I will off, off okay. the record. All right. Sure. Tell, yeah, yeah, tell yeah, tell me your name. Yeah. It's tough with Canadian. Oh, who's the who's the um, uh, most famous one? Uh, Hatfield, Chris Hatfield, I think is is your oh, most. Yes. Yeah, that guy, the the guitar playing guy. The um, I mean, with astronauts, it's kind of tough. Uh, I'll t- I'll share you a quick story. Um, you know, I was doing a uh, an interview, a UK thing, and they had they blindsided me and brought on one of our astronauts. Uh, in the studio next to uh, the the presenter, and I was coming in through video conference, and the, they were trying to pick a fight between us. You know, it's like you know, are you American? Do you hate America? Are you calling are you calling this astronaut here a a traitor? You know, or a liar? And I go, no, but he's a full bird colonel in the U.S. military. I go, I go, you don't make it to be a full bird unless you know exactly you know how to keep your mouth but shut. Not- that's actually like fun fact uh, because I do know people that are higher level government, uh, even yeah. working like like part of like the like, like space force. By the way, anyway, right. <laughs> and um, and he very high ranking someone that's uh, like ex special forces as well and, and uh, like business uh, on the side rejoined because of what's going on. But like he and he's like high level. He has no idea the reality of the world. I tried to share some content with him a few years ago. Yeah. And he's, he, he's like, uh, you know, uh, basically he's like, you know what, we're, we're you know, I, I've respected you and admired you and for, for years, but like, I'm out, you know what I mean? Like he hasn't <sighs> talked to me since, right. He thinks I'm fucking cr- fudging crazy. And I'm, yeah. and I, and I, and I'm, and it's, it's unfortunate because like, I was also someone that was like worked with him on higher level stuff and, uh, you know, as a peer, as a colleague. And, uh, and I thought I had that credibility and as soon as i said that it doesn't matter it's like nope <laughs> well okay okay D- well to be to be fair did he ever go up was he no. an ass no yeah and that was that's just no, it. No, no, no. He's, if he's an astronaut or or part of aerospace and name only they don't know in fact i don't think this is such a big enough secret and if you've heard my stuff you probably heard me say this that you don't tell them until you have to tell them it's that's a need exactly. to know deal and even then, you know, remember, they're not going up anyway. So it's like, okay, you're going to go be faking this and this. Now, as you know, because you know about clearances, it's like, no, you don't have the clearance to know why you're faking it. You're just faking it. No different than a, than a spook that's um, or a special ops person that's that's sniping somebody. It's like, oh, no, this guy's coming out of this hotel at this time of day. Here's your rifle. Shoot him. You don't get to ask why you're shooting them. You don't get to ask the, the political intrigue behind it. That's your job. That's what you and do. With... Go ahead. And, uh, I'm familiar with that as well because uh, like, uh, like a combat support company to second in command, we, like, uh, like I was responsible for snipers and for reconnaissance teams and, and, and signals. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so, uh, but the thing is like, th- these are heroes, these are warriors. And the thing right. is like, they should like, I would rather it be like me giving them the orders, you know what I mean? Like to go after someone that's an actual bad guy than to have, yeah. you know what I mean? Them be lied to and go after someone that's an actual innocent person. That's probably right. just like speaking out on what's going on with the government. Right. Because right. fun fact, I've also done training <laughs> um, with international communities. And uh, like, there's a lot I can't say on here, but um, where there's specifically the, the training in the last few years has been about specifically targeting people internationally uh, like an Interpol type thing, but like military and going yeah. after people. And this has been happening for decades and generations anyways. Like it's not that like we're course. not aware of it, but uh, but like more so in first world countries now, like they're, they're like they're, they're, the training is geared towards targeting people that are going against what we're talking about. Like, so me, right? You know what I mean? Like anyone that's right. talking about, uh, you know, like calling out lies or deceit from, from government and uh, speaking out against all that stuff. Uh, are, it's literally within the narrative. <laughs> Sure. To paint us sure, as I get extremists you. or like homegrown Paris or whatever you want to call it, which is not true at all. Yeah. And and so it is what I it understand. is. So you so when you first uh, so sub, like you were saying earlier, and I know you can't give names. You had special forces friends that are either out or still in that were fully fully into flat Earth and told you just like, oh yeah, here's here's why. One. What? And I don't. One. And I and, and there's a and there's a couple people like I only literally know like less than five people in all of Canada. Yeah. And again, I like I'm well, like like I'm very connected. Like I've been to the Yukon and back. I've been to PE. I've been east and west coast, like yeah. all over the Canada, like all over the world, basically. But um, and so connected in, in certain networks. And uh, there's like less than five people, and I don't know anyone in Canada. So like maybe you would know more than me because of these conventions. I don't know anyone in Canada that is speaking out like I am on on flat Earth or 
any of these other no no you're you're right very few can i mean yeah you're right yeah, it's so funny you mentioned that uh we had there, there were a bunch of people from canada that came to the conference for example almost none had their own channels uh and and women you're the only woman in canada i think <laughs> that i know I that don't know anyone else i've looked i just the, i haven't seen it yet. yeah put it put it yourself the channels now the um let, let's talk a couple um, logistics things really quick because you knew snipers and still probably do know snipers. Uh, nice did you ever deal with a sniper? Because I shoot, uh, you know, that dealt with anything but windage and elevation. You know, do you ever, ever, yep. that was, that's basically it. Yep. Windage and oh, elevation. And, and pressure and atmospheric pressure and things like that. Like things, well, of course, like, of there's course. Minor like things like that. You know what I mean? But it's, it, there's no, there's no Coriolis effect. There's yeah. Yeah. I, can't remember the last time I took a shot where it's all of a sudden I pause like, oh, crap, I got to look up, look up on the map uh, where I am and see how fast the earth is spinning where I am. In fact, um, uh, there was a, a, one of our guys, a master gunner who was a good friend of mine, he uh, for a ta- you know, career tank. And, he's, and he stopped me dead in my tracks. He goes, do you know how tough it would be to shoot anything if we had to take into account the curvature, especially the Coriolis effect, especially the Coriolis effect? Oh, my effect. God. It makes it, no sense. And uh, I was mechanized infantry, so I was with, uh, like, so I was in an, a mechanized battalion, and so it was light armored vehicles, and so yeah. like I was firing basically cannons out of uh, out of the uh, light armored vehicles, you know, like, and so and uh, in, in the infantry, like, we, like, uh, because being an officer, you have to fire every every weapon system that you're going to be employing, and you have to be yeah. aware and familiar of like the max effective range where you can employ it, all that stuff. Right. Never, never discuss Coriolis effect. And, and again, I was combat support company second in command. I literally was the coordinator, whatever you want to call it. There were snipers in my 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 company and reconnaissance. You know, and these are advanced, you know, level people like within uh, the Green Army was what we call it. Like these were like the best of the best. Yeah. And I also was married to a sniper. And oh. I fun fact, I was a better shot than my ex. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and uh, but I've also competed internationally, so it's not fair to to to, to signal that out. That's yeah, okay. Uh, that's all right. It's not slamming him. He's a good shot too. And um and yeah, like never factored in Coriolis effect. Yeah. And I fire a lot as well. I'm a firearms instructor. And uh and and I'm I'm not out there with like yeah. uh, like sixteen hundred and ninety thousand, yeah. you know what I mean? No. Anyway. Yeah, it, no, it drives me nuts every time I see, uh, you know, over here, you know, we'll, somebody will run a news report. It's like, oh, a sniper took a really, you know, long shot. And he take, had taken into effect the, the curvature and the Coriolis effect. And I'm, I'm like throwing stuff at the screen. It's like, it's like you're just lying because ev- you're confirming basically what all our other military people have said. You know, everyone, everyone from howitzers to tanks to missiles to even submarine guys. It's like, you know, you go, look, submarines are basically planes that are underwater. Right. And, and we don't and he, everyone said, oh, yeah, we've heard about the Coriolis effect. We've heard we I've seen even, you know, they've said, oh, I've seen even seen charts that talk about it. We never use it. It's never put into a firing solution ever. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I, I totally get that. And, 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 even, like, and even being outside, like you can feel like the slightest of winds. And, and, and you're telling me that, you know, what I mean, at the equator, it's like sixteen hundred and ninety kilometers per hour. Like I just. Yep. And zero at the time, like it makes no sense to me. And uh, like even yep. with that, like uh, when when you think about it, and with the clouds, and uh, even with cannons, you know, like when they when they when they fire up, you know, I mean, they go almost directly back into like the cannon holes. Like there's no, but even with the even with the with with hummingbirds and with with bees, like they're not impacted by even with this gravitational force they're talking about as well. Like these are things that. Once you go well, further down the rabbit hole, <laughs> let let let's go into it then. So what are your if uh, if I'm brand new to to the flutter thing, right, and we're we're sitting over coffee, you know, and and we know each other pretty well, you're throwing this at me. What's what's your what's your lead stuff you're you're, you're throwing at people when it when it comes to to flutter? Assuming you know ass- what? I've never been asked that before because uh-huh. people are like yeah, talking exactly. about this at all in my family either. <laughs> like it gets shut down before I even go like like uh, I, it's funny, but. Well, I mean, do you do you segue? Do you, do you I mean, do you try to like lean into it? It's like, so what do you think about the American space program or or or, or <laughs> with my like family? It, it doesn't get brought up because uh, oh. and 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 it's it's out of respect because like what like because I'm in a different province. So whenever I go to see my family now, it's usually during like family gatherings. Sure. And uh, and so like there's academics in my family and and there's people that are very vocal and opinionated, right? And so like there's also the the like the real risk of like an argument <laughs> and then like ruining Christmas dinner or Thanksgiving. And is it worth it? Because like people within my family are very adamant that they believe that the earth is a globe. And I've right. and I've shared links uh, to, uh, to certain people even, yeah. even years ago. And uh, they don't even want to look at it. They're, they're it's shut out. They've called me a pseudoscientist of all yep. freaking things in my, like, I'm like, anyway, you can call me so many <laughs> names, but like a pseudoscientist, like, 
you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's going to be all over the internet. Like they're going to, people are going to be like, oh, the pseudoscientist anyway. Um, okay. Okay. Well, <clears throat> let me, let me change. <clears throat> let me change text but I would segue um, with, with so many different things. Like, um, well, I guess I couldn't do that, but I would, I would start with the curvature being debunked. And then I would talk about like, do you know, I would ask questions, like, do you know about the Pythagorean model or the uh, or the logarithms or the algorithms that is used with the uh, Pythagoras theorem? Do you know the right. other models that are used and the calculations that are used, you know, like where it's eight inches per mile squared. And even like, it doesn't matter how long of, a, of an algorithm you put in place. Like, I'm sorry, when you break it down and it actually, it's actually giving more credit, credit, like it's giving more leeway to the globe earthers, like the, the Pythagoras eight inches per mile squared model that's right. being used when you break it down. And uh, and so even after three three miles, right? Like with the six feet, you know, and then going beyond that, it's just like, I mean, you can prove that yourself on any given day, right? So like, I would start with something like that, you know, and I would say like, walk your butt, you know what I mean? To like a like a lake or something like that. Like, I mean, or, or a place where you have that distance, bring out a camera, or whatever, and uh, and then uh, or vector binos or binos for those sniper guys out there, and 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 make your assessments right. And so this is what I mean, like even with snipers, like with vector binos and all these like advanced capabilities that we're using for surveillance, like it, it sh it's it's so oh, obvious, right? It's beyond beyond you know ten miles even for 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 people, and even even for myself, like being a, an upper like being um like in the, as an officer in the infantry like i'm co i was coordinating assets with with the tankers with uh with the engineers with uh with the, with pilots with the, with people in the air like so multiple different uh, elements as well mm -hmm. who also fire fire at long ranges longer ranges and um and there's no curvature for that as well and so i would start with that and and say that you can prove these things yourself because then the onus is on them and then just about the um I would say with the sun, people always ask me about the sun, like how, like, like how, like how can you debunk that, right? About this, like allegedly being 93 million miles away. And I just ask questions because a lot of people, not a lot of people, like only a few people have talked to me about this or are open to it, but they don't know the, the like their, their, their model at all, like right. at all. Right. And so, you know, like they're, they're calling me an idiot or all of these things, but I'm like, okay, well, how far is the sun away from the earth? And how is it that if it's 93 million miles away and like, we're rotating and spinning around and, and revolving, then how is it that, um, like, uh, look with corpuscular rays, how are we seeing the rays from above, right? And uh, and, and and closer, and um, with, anyways, I can go on all these tangents, but. Do it, keep going. Even the sun's a path, like, uh, like it's, uh, it travels through, um, like the Tropic of Ca Cancer and then the equator and then the Tropic of, Tropic of Cancer, uh, Capricorn, right? Mm -hmm. So like, even with that, like I, I've looked at uh, astro astronomical mathematical books, astro, astro astrology books, astronomy books, and then the, the, the mathematical equations that are being used. Right. And, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so it even says in these books, and then it just like goes off and like, and it explains away other things, but like that the sun travels through the, uh, through the, um, the zodiac signs, 15 degrees every hour mm -hmm. through the zodiac sign. So every, every zodiac sign that it passes through, uh, it's every, it's every two hours. And so this is a divine clock that we're seeing. And, um, so how would that be possible? You know what I mean? If we're spinning around, you know, like uh, we're spinning and rotating and then revolving around the, the, the sun and traveling at ridiculous miles, you know, through the, through the, through the galaxies, it just, uh, it's, it's an impossibility just because of how accurately we can pre predict the seasons and the, and the sun's ecliptical path. And right. so you've probably talked about this before as well, but on, on the March 20th in the Northern hemisphere or the 21st in the Southern hemisphere, we have the spring equinox where we have the equal amount of day and night. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, and then it starts, it's a, uh, it's ascent from equilibrium to uh to, to uh depending on if you go to the northern or, or southern hemispheres on the 20th or 21st of june and that's mm -hmm. why also in, in in books they talk about saint john the baptist day being on the 24th of june because that's when uh, the sun essentially starts its descent from like the highest point uh you know in the sky and so it, it follows a and this is probably boring for a lot of people because i'm talking about math and sine waves and stuff like that but right. it, it follows like a sinusoidal cycloid ecliptical path in the sky above us and uh and um and then so it starts its uh, ascent, sorry, it starts its descent. And then on, on around the 23rd of September, we have uh, this, we have the fall or the autumn uh, equinox where we have equal amount of day and night. And sorry, I, I'll back up. On the mm -hmm. 20th or the 21st of June, that's when we have the longest periods of, of daylight and, and the shortest amount of night, right. as you know. And um, and when the sun is in, is in Capricorn, sorry, in Cancer, when the sun is in Cancer, and um, what else can I say about that? And, uh, and it's, yeah, in, in uh, the cancer, cancer is ruled by the moon. Anyways, that's one other thing as well. And um, just before I move on, 
<laughs> no, I think that's good. And then on the 23rd of September, we have equinox, uh, the equinox again. And, uh, and then on the winter solstice, that is the 21st of December in the Northern hemisphere and the 22nd of December in the Southern hemisphere. Mm. And where we have the shortest amount of uh, daylight, the longest amount of night and uh, where the sun stays on, on the lowest path um, for three days. And on the 25th of December rises again, and, uh, and then starts from the lowest point in the sky, you know what I mean? The shortest amount of day, it starts its ascent again from the lowest point and then going back, you know, uh, into the sign of, you know, the, 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 and going back to the spring equinox. Sure. And so there's Mithras and Dionysus and Jesus and Horus and the Phoenix, so many different representations of the sun on its path um, within the sky, within the firmament. Right. And, and then also, like, I, I know I'm talking so much, but on the honor around the July 8th of every single year, we have like you see like anywhere between 98 and 99 percent sunlight okay, and that's based on where it is above us and so how would that even be possible how would anything above like 90 percent like how would that be even be possible of, of, of people seeing daylight and again this is also something that's like accurate every single freaking year sorry for swearing and uh, and so like that would be an impossibility if the sun was 93 million miles away right. you know if or anything and so and then people talk about um, well, how do we see like the moon, like an, it, like upside down in the Southern hemisphere and stuff like that? I'm like, well, picture being at a table, whether it be a square table or a circular table, and there's a light above. And like, let's say there's a, like a six, you know what I mean? Like up, like right beside the light. You know what I mean? If like someone like at one end of the table, they might see a nine, the person at the other end of the table, they might, they'll, they'll see a six. And then right. someone on the other ends, they'll see sideways sixes or nines. You know what I mean? It's just based on the perspective, based on like where you're, where, where you're at and where you're seeing it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so also impossible if, you know, the moon, if, sorry, if the sun was 93 million miles away, you know, like, uh, on its, on its path. And, and so I would probably start with those and then, um, and then go from there because there's just so much, like, let's talk about flat. Earth. I, I know, so many years I it's, 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 <laughs> oh, it's and it's like, why, why are there, why? And, and then I would ask the questions too, about like, why, you know, like e even with so many different government documents that are archived now, it's so hard to get access to. Why are all these the like, complicated algorithms and and mathematical equations being based on a flat non-rotating Earth? Right. Like all of them, like a flat stationary, flat non-rotating oh. rotating Earth. And I have gone through myself personally, and uh, and gone through and and, and access these uh, archived um, documents. And they don't want you to see it at all, right? right? They will. Oh. Like, uh, oh, sorry, my dogs are being a little loud in the background. That, that's right. What's what's your dog's name? I've got Rangers, the Husky, and then Smokey. He's a he's a mix. Ranger and Smokey. Who's who's making the noise? Ranger. I'll get I'll, I'll get him out. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That's cute. I love that At one point, I only saw the ears. <laughs> it was like okay. No, that's cute. But by the way, to your, to your point, something you, you mentioned earlier, uh, I think a lot of military people, just like a lot of anybody, they, they just don't know, you know, because they couldn't see the forest for the trees. A uh, little quick story. The, in America, we've got a, an ex, a retired SR-71 pilot, you know, Blackbird, who was traveling around the United States, you know, on a regular basis, does a book tour. And part of his thing, you know, he goes on stage. And it's like, yeah, I flew the Blackbird. I'm the coolest guy ever. Blah, blah, blah. And he says, "Yeah, when I was um, when I was up in the air in Phoenix, above the above Phoenix, I could see Los Angeles at, at, at seventy thousand feet." And it's like, okay. But then when he turned to his right, he's like, "Oh no, I could see where the the Rocky Mountains met Canada." And I'm thinking to myself, "Ah, uh, not at seventy thousand feet, you can't. No, nah, no, that that you shouldn't even be able. To, you should not see Canada at all." And so I could even he, you know, because he's just saying this publicly, he didn't know. He's seen it's you know it didn't occur to him it's like oh wow that is too far, whatever. Yeah. So, but um, so you're a big so you believe in the dome, I, I dig that. There was something you also well, I said. believe that there, like that this is a uh, an electromagnetic reality being projected via hyperboloids and toroidal fields on a flat plane of inertia, and yep. I feel like the uh, or I believe that the um, like the uh, like these uh, these fields is what's keeping us in. Like we just can't tr like go beyond that. Just like a video game, it's a, it's a bad analogy, but. Like, I don't think that the way out of this video game or this this cosmos or universe is uh, is uh, that way. Like, I don't think it's physically possible or 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 mentally possible. Yeah, no, nobody's getting out of here. Not 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 the way it's not the way it's built. And by the way, don't don't feel bad. I mean, if you know anything about me, I come from the video game world. I, I was a video oh, game. Right. Oh, yeah. Not only did I play professionally, but I, uh, I was a video game producer back in the 90s. So huge, huge I, uh, I, uh, industry. 
oh yeah, big, big industry. And of course, everyone was striving to do the same thing, which was eventually create some sort of virtual reality. And of course, you're never going to get that close to it. But we all built the, the, when we were building things, we started noticing that the world around us mimicked what we were building. And it shouldn't be that way. Kind of like uh, uh, if you've ever played any games, it's like like uh, the double slit experiment. When you look at something off the distance in a video game, you know that there's nothing behind it because you would never draw anything behind it because your character is never going there. The problem is, why is that happening here? Why when when basically uh, the double slit experiment says that what you're not looking at, you're looking at me right now. But what's behind what's in the next room isn't being rendered because you're not right. there watching it. And it's like that just screams virtual. It, you know, it screams electrostatic stream, you know, it, it, which is like, because, be, and, and which makes me smile. And you probably know the stories when the Americans in the Soviet Union tried to, uh, you know, fire, you know, atomic weapons at the, at the walls, trying to see if they could get out. It's oh. like, hey, you're not doing anything. It's not going to work. Because <laughs> yeah. you're using like Operation tools. Fishbowl too. They were, they were, yeah, there's like so many different, like, yeah. And they're yeah. still doing tests and, and, and yeah, another rabbit hole, but nu nukes, interesting rabbit hole as well nuclear yeah yeah i i i first okay yeah the the nuke thing i my take on it is at the very least and i'll, I'll tell you and i don't mind if people listen because uh, our community is so huge that we've got factions and all sorts of different things you know as you know there's, there's not everybody gets no, along no. but that's fine um but for me do i believe in fission weaponry Yes, because it sounds like something that men would come up with because the, the solution, which is breaking the molecules via explosion implosion, seems like something we'd come up with. Just just crush it. Just crush the molecules and release the energy. It's like, oh, yeah, that sounds ham fisted enough. But um, but there was a water shot. If you ever get the chance, watch a, a, um, a documentary that was done years ago, narrated by William Shatner, of all, of all people, called um, oh, Trinity. Yes, yes, he is very good. Uh, by the way, and he also went to, and he lied anyway because, like, I mean, he's ninety three years old when he like apparently went into in, like the uh, that. Oh, yeah, that that fly, oh yeah, that zero G Come flight. On. No doctor would ever let that happen. No, no way. way. He was ninety three. Like this is what I mean. Like the G force alone, and so like I've been in all like aircrafts as well. Like, I've been in you know Chinooks. I've been in helicopters. I've, like you name it, and yeah. um, and then I've also been in Cessnas and stuff like that. Like you can feel the G force, and I know people that are pilots. And now a freaking astronaut, you know what I mean, personally, and like like incredibly fit, like elite level fitness. Like I'm talking like crazy fitness, and and you, like you feel the G force even at um, even at three. I don't know if people know like the levels two, three, five, but like you're tripling your body weight even you know, yeah. after you know two, three G force, and then and so hundreds of pounds even at that. And they're claiming that they're going like be like you know experiencing like like you'd have to no, he would be dead. Yeah, he would be dead. They would all yeah. and they're like knitting and playing guitar and like smoking and joking like as they're like uh, uh, yeah. moving, you know <laughs> yeah, yeah the iss and again i get it the iss is an absolute joke uh you know the americans i, I mean it's, it's not embarrassing production value but it's 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 insulting but i i get it you know i don't know what the education system is in canada but down here look the physics club and the math club are really really small everybody else it's it's really really big all you have to do is fool the masses you don't have to fool the math club and the physics club they're going to go along with you because they're going to just going to make up a reason you know like the the challenge that i put out years ago it's like why does a, the space suit work in a vacuum how does it work no one will even no one no one has emailed me in nine years to tell me how it works and then and, and also going past like the van allen radiation there itself, you go you know what i mean with the space yep. suits like impossibility of that and then even yeah. with like that like the suits on uh on, on on the moon like and and then when they're wearing these same space suits by the way that also have like uh diving equipment within like it has like a like a like so that they don't drown in space because right. like, a lot of the training stuff they do is in pools. So now within the suits as well, they have like ways of like uh, like breathing apparatuses. So like like uh, because there's been injuries and I'm going on all these tangents. <laughs> but, well, uh, well, let, me, let me let me throw one you probably hadn't thought of because I hadn't even thought of it till last night. Uh, there was somebody in in the after show that mentioned this to me that they knew somebody that worked on the joints for deep deep underwater um, uh, scuba suits. Right, which are mostly metal, you know, they're they're hard, hard synthetic plastics to to resist the pressure or or metals, you know, like like the old deep deep sea, you know, yeah. suits with you know and stuff like that. And it's like, like SpongeBob SquarePants, that, that guy, like uh, that, anyway. The what? SpongeBob SquarePants. Thing. Yes, oh like SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes, but but the problem was, it's like, wait a minute, 
that's what the astronaut suit should be like because the pressure is just going the other way. It should be hard, uh, really hard suits as well, and they're not. And, and and but again, the general public, it's like, well, real quick, um, when I ask people from other countries, it's like, why do why do you believe the Americans? And they all say the same thing. It's like, well, because it was on television. The Americans would. Oh my god! I know. I get that all the time. Oh my god. It's like, and I mean, sincerely, I mean, I like this guy from Ireland who just bugged the hell me. It's like, I go, I, I understand why the Americans believe it. Why do you believe it without even questioning it? And they go, well, because even the challenger, uh, even with the challenger, uh, mission, you know what I mean? Like I've literally shown people that alive and well, and, uh, and I'll, and they're just like, nope. And I'm like, okay, so you're going to believe a video that like, a, like something that you saw on TV a couple of decades ago, several decades ago, but you're not going to believe what I'm sharing to you as someone that has top secret government clearance, as someone that's over 20 years. And he's like, uh, you know, right. Did you, did you ever see the, the video where we, one of our guys went to one of the astronauts houses while he was shoveling snow? Oh, he was shoveling it? snow. Yeah. Yeah. He was <laughs> shoveling, he was shoveling snow in, in his driveway and we asked him, you know, and, and it was weird cause he brought it. He, oh my God. He, he gave it away. Where he was like, it's like, oh yeah, I've heard that a few times over the years. That apparently my whole life I've looked like this guy. It's like, really, your whole life you looked like this random astronaut with this random face. You just look yeah. like this guy. But, but the part that got me was, what, and, and it was a total giveaway. And you know this if you watch cops or, or if you've ever interrogated somebody. What he never did was he never gave an alibi, which is that's the first thing you do if you're being accused of something. It's like, hey, were you on the were you on the space shuttle that blew up, right? First thing you're going to say, it's like, no, in 1986, I was in blah, I was in Kentucky doing blah, blah, never said anything. It's like, nope. one would think you would offer that up. It's like, what were you doing in 1986? Nope. He yeah. Yeah. And they try to lie to you and saying like, oh, they're, they're twins. And then you look at the records, you look at the school records, you look at uh, all these accounts, even birth records. There's no, there's no uh, twins. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, so they tried that excuse. And then after that, they started hiring people that were twins to try to cover it up. There's so many right. things they're doing now. And even Buzz Aldrin admitted drunk uh, to a child that I've even shared that video. I saw that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I saw that. I watched, I watched when you did that. And yeah, you're absolutely right. Buzz, come on. How long can he hold on to the secret? Plus dementia is going to set in eventually. I'm yeah. a little surprised they haven't just kind of escorted him off somewhere because I know. <laughs> it, it's it's like he's he's one step away from blowing the whole thing, to to be quite honest. Because all it's gonna take, I will say this, they have and and you know full well from your from your line of work, which is you cite for when it comes to astronauts, first off, they're military, second, you psychologically profile, third, you monitor their email, their phone calls, and if they yeah. even hint at any way going off in a different direction, you correct that as fast as you can. In fact, right. you, can, you can even throw in the uh, Gus Grissom thing if you want, you know, as a, like a dark little thing. It's like, oh yeah, remember Gus Grissom, the guy that hung the yeah. lemon on one of our spacecraft? Yeah, remember he was supposed to, remember he was supposed to be the first guy. He was the guy that was supposed to be on the moon. He was the one that was speaking out on these things, even even before he even left. He like he was questioning. Yeah, uh, he, 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 like he knew. Oh. Yeah, he knew, which is why I was glad that like Chuck Yeager, our finest pilot, he wasn't part of the program. But Gus Grissom, yeah, he 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 saw he looked at the engineer. He's like, yeah, it ain't gonna work. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you guys you think you're gonna do with that, but it's not gonna work. And it's like, yeah, what happened to Gus? Oh, and then not. even with like the the lack of oxygen, you know what I mean? Like making it such a highly flammable area that we're even like a little bit of static from hair could have set off like oh. in other instances too, you know, like a, like a, like a, you know, explosions or or fires, like literally criminals. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I I want to, if I ever get a chance to ask an astronaut because I'd love to see what their question is, even if they're listening to this, which is because I I want to ask them like about the ISS, for example. It's like, so what's your uh, you know if you ever know any scuba divers, and I'm sure you have, which is what's your uh, nitrogen oxygen ratio up there? You know, just just want to ask because I wanted to slip up and say, oh, like seventy percent oxygen. Like, oh, really? Because that's toxic. <laughs> so you want to change that answer because scuba divers only do seventy thirty nitrogen oxygen, which begs the question. How'd you get all the freaking nitrogen up to the space station? So I will, I, I uh, and so my, my astronaut friend, I actually, a few years ago was reaching yeah. out to him on social media, like, and even on LinkedIn of all places too, just trying to like reach out to him about this stuff and uh, wasn't getting, getting anywhere, but he was gone for a while and then came yeah. back on social media. And then, uh, and then it was announced that he was part of like these missions and stuff like that. But then guess what? Like, so I, I, I messaged back. And now his accounts, all of his accounts for a while now, they're, they're taken over by the Canadian Space Agency. So that's what happens. They actually have people that are actually, they, they take over their accounts and they yeah. let you know too. They're like, hey, you know what I mean? If you want to reach me, this is not the way. And then so there's no way of communicating with these people because all of their social media platforms are taken over by government. 
you know, yeah. and by certain yeah. people. And for us, it's the Canadian Space Agency. For you guys, it would be the American Space Agency. Yeah. And um, and then yeah, the ones that well, are. You... Go ahead. Go ahead. You're oh, good. So like, so like, like, I, so there's no point in me saying like, hey, like, earn a slack. Like, take a look at this video. Take a look at this because <laughs> it's gonna go nowhere, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And and again, you of course you would have handlers and. Again, what what I was trying to get at earlier was uh, no one in aerospace has crossed the line. Uh, no, I mean, yes, military people. Sure, I've gotten all sorts of military people, pilots, air traffic controllers, uh, snipers, you know, artillery, all those guys. But but aerospace, you have to lock it down as as best you can. And uh, to this day, no one. I mean, I, that, I'd say that wasn't going to happen anyway because there's less than I think there's only like five. Well, let's say 600 people that even have claimed to have been in orbit or hot or further. And that's in the world yeah. total. And almost yeah. 95 percent of them are military from whatever, whatever branch, you know, or whatever country. But uh, and then and, even with, this, with, the, with, the, with the landing, with the rocks that they brought back, like those have been confirmed repeatedly to be petrified trees. Yeah. And, uh, you know, or whatever you want to call it. And like and, and from Earth. And uh, the filming too was done, uh, like some of the filming done underwater. But I was going to say that Chris Hatfield, some of these people that are astronauts, they're actually people that are like, that are scuba divers as well. Like these sure. people are divers, like and so, and they have to be because like a lot of the stuff they're doing as well, it's it's literally underwater. And yeah. so that's where they have uh, you know that experience. And uh, yeah, and 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 well, I, again, I, you and I are we're preaching to the choirs, but that's fine. We'll, let's keep doing that for a little bit. <laughs> which is um, which is the you know, the, no one thinks it's suspicious that the, uh, the training center for the ISS is in uh, that deep pool at all. It's like, wait, that's the absolute opposite you would want to do. The pressure is coming in from the outside. Yeah. Why Why would you train in a water environment? It's like, oh, because it's got that floaty feel. <laughs> it's like, so, so what? You you test in a, you know, with a harness and, and, and you know, because by the way, it also gives resistance. There's no resistance in space. You know, like with water, you know, it's it's tough to move in water because you have to push against the the medium, which is the water. In space, in fact, you're pushing into nothing. Or, or oh, sorry, one more, one more quick thing. Again, little things that people miss, which I'm sure you caught, which is uh, when they were doing the space stuff. You know, like jumping around the moon. Why are they jumping in slow motion? I go, you you weigh 180, oh, yeah. 180 pound man weighs 30 pounds. Therefore, you're superhuman. You should be moving super fast. And I mean, vertical leap would be amazing. I mean, if you had to, all of a sudden, if you weighed a sixth of what you weighed now, think of what yeah. you could do. It's like no oh my God. feats of strength. It'd be awesome. Nope, nope. We're not gonna do any of that. Whatever. Yeah, they were they were they were being connected with uh, with ropes and stuff like that. You could see you could see some of like the harness like uh, like uh, like like stuff um, from like uh, some videos that that multiple people have shown. But even with the visors, you know, sure. you see like you know like like uh, pe people like filming like within the visors and like the, even the lighting, like multiple different angles of lighting. The stars not being there, like different rocks having numbers on them or letters. You know what I mean? Because they're stage props. There you go. Um, like there's, uh, there, and even that, like, uh, there, there's so much to it. Like even, yeah. uh, like, like or, the, the, the earth, the earth photos, clearly CGI, even, uh, the blue marble guy even admitted, you know, it, it as well with the stitching and stuff like that. So we, people are admitting this, yeah. you know, and, and people are still like, even when I share that them admitting it and share the actual government d d data, the mathematical equations, all this stuff. And even with chat GPT, I'm going on all these tan tangents, but, uh, even with chat GPT, this AI system, I have literally even online just recently, like I, I've, I've proven this, this, this system incorrect multiple times, right? Where, and, and if you don't know the equations, if you don't know the, the mathematical equations or the, or the, uh, or the results in advance, then you would believe it. Right. But like, even like it's painful, but like breaking down like Pythagorean model, asking uh, it to like calculate earth curvature and you have to be so specific and then know your content and know the results first. And then like, and then finally it re reaches the, uh, like, your conclusion. Oh yeah, no, chat. Yeah, no, I I did rants on Chat GPT as soon as it came out. I, I'm a I'm a huge sci-fi guy, and it's like, look, it is not what you. I mean, I know the media wants to make it look like, oh, it's going to be Terminator and all the sci-fi movies. Like, no, no, Chat GPT is limited. Oh, oh now God. can it write a paper for you? You bet it can. You know, it's it's the worst thing for the education system. In fact, there was a, a friend of a friend who was a freshman at a university down here, and she tried to use Chat GPT like in the first semester, and the and the professor called her on it. And he's like, "Yeah, not buying it. You're out." And they threw her out of school for it. To made her her turned her into an example. And but but to look, I, I'm one of those guys. It's like, look, I will find the exploit. It's like all she had to do was ask Chat GPT. It's like, okay, write this paper. I am 18 years old. 
include 5% grammatical errors and 1% spelling errors, you know, smudge it up, smudge it yep. up, dirty it up a little bit. <laughs> And the, and the professor will never figure it out because they'll see the first error and it's like, oh, you know, you know red marker it and then you'll be fine. But nope, she had to go for perfection because she was lazy. So, yeah, chat GPT, no, not it's self-aware. OK, real quick. And, and you and if, tell me if you if you disagree with this, which is I because people have said, oh, you know, AI is eventually in chat GPT. It's going to it's going to become self-aware and take over the world. And I go, no, the reason is, is because, look, I come from a programming background. We can't even come up with a flow chart of how that would work because we'd have to define ourselves. You're at basically looking in the mirror. It's like, okay, what makes me, me? Okay. First, you have to answer that question, which is light in motion. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's tough. And then, okay, code that, write that into, in, you know, try to code that. It's like, don't even, he knows where to start. So whenever Elon Musk and I, oh, the guy just drives me nuts. You want us, you know, start throwing that. It's like, oh no, you know, Terminators are going to take over the world. It's like, dude, what, what, what? Oh, sorry, just because you're talking about Elon Musk. Fun oh, fact, I'm not sure if you're aware of this. Is uh, I, I'm, you probably know this, but like uh, what we're calling uh, like satellites as well. It's not just these these uh, these these what these balloons right. in, in, in the sky or, 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 or things like that. And then these uh, I forget what they call them, but these electromagnetic uh, that are also simulating the satellite, but like that show like um, anyway, um, yeah. but. Uh, the reason why he called that no-fly zone in Ukraine was because, uh, sorry, there, there was a no-fly zone in Ukraine in that area. You probably know the story, and yeah. uh, and so because of the no-fly zone, like Starlink and, and these and any other you know uh, companies that are using aircrafts to do that connection, that GPS connection for for connectivity, um, yeah. they, they, he had no excuse for the reason why like Starlink wouldn't be available in that area for a no-fly zone. So what yeah. he so he made himself look like a hero, you know what I mean? But like no, it's because like you weren't able to fly your friggin' planes and connect Starlink, you know what I mean? Like over overhead, like that's the only reason. So don't make it seem like you were a hero for that. When in fact, it yeah, had to do with yeah, 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 you, 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 the fact that you have your satellite connections or whatever you want to call it on your on, on all aircrafts do that and and bounce signals off each other. Yeah, and, yeah you you've been listening to David Weiss's stuff a little bit, haven't you? Oh yeah, yeah, he's a I would yeah he's a um. Well versed in this stuff as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's good. No, Dave, David's a friend of mine. He's a great guy. I, I know his routine so well now. That it's like because I listen to his interviews whenever I get a chance to have something in the background. Oh, and the and, flat Earth uh, map. App, sorry, I promote that. Like that's his. Oh yeah. Like, uh, oh, you so, have like, you have you have oh, the yeah. flat Sun, Moon, and Zodiac for clock. Years, app? You know, absolutely. For years, I've had that. I've, and I shared. That's the first thing I actually share with people. So when you're questioning about the flat Earth, like what do I start with? I actually legitimately, and I'm not plugging this at all. I promise you, but oh, I no, literally say. Plug it. I, I got it on screen right yes, here. I, I literally share it, and and then and then honestly, like that is what that is. It's helped. It helps so much. Oh yeah, no, it's it is a great app. I was really embarrassed that uh, you got it on your screen. Sweet, she's got the feather <laughs> on the Sunday o'clock app. The um, um, I was embarrassed that I I didn't have it for like the first year it was out because <laughs> like ah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And then finally, um, it it did evolve over time, and now it's really really slick. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're right with the the plane stuff. I, I want to include a quick story on that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The point you were getting at was um, adding airplanes as roving cell towers is genius because genius. no one knows, right? Even the pilots don't freaking know, you, you know, that they're actually they're basically they're turning each airplane into over a certain size into a hotspot. It's like wow, yeah. that's actually pretty damn clever. Yeah. Unless there is a no fly zone in the world. That no one can fly over, in which case that screws up that zone, and then you have to make up make up stories for that. Um, the other part, which you may or, or David's probably said it, but I know I've said it on certain things, which is the the planes which go off, you know, off um, uh, GPS when they drop off a of GPS. I remember the first time I, I told people, yeah, it happens in the southern hemisphere, and almost immediately I had pilots calling me from the northern hemisphere saying, oh no no dude, it happens here too. He goes, he goes, you leave, he goes, any plane that goes from the West, our West coast until like Hawaii, there's no islands between here and Hawaii, for example. Yeah. He goes, when, when you leave San Francisco or Los Angeles, wherever it is, when you get out 200 miles offshore, oh no, you're blinked out. Your, your latitude and longitude is gone. And it's like, your, your heading's good. It's like, you'll get there, but you, they don't know where your plane is. And, uh, I've even had guys inside the United States tell me that it's like, no, there are zones where if there's no towers, your plane is is drops off. I mean, yeah, you'll see the icon on the screen, but if you go to latitude and longitude, it's like, nope, nope. Yeah, because they don't want you to see 
the errors and inconsistencies in like what we're using for these models or sort of for the navigation and what we're claiming and and what is actually reality right and so right. like as you know and uh, and even like gps people like keep on saying like uh, it stands for satellite like no it doesn't it, it's system and ground towers also are are what is what is what is being utilized to uh to connect us you know um oh and ground, with, uh, ground, ground towers work very very well because as you know yeah. we're adding cell towers as fast as humanly possible it's like yeah again that works for the most part but there are some places where it can't and to your gps thing you probably already knew this and that is it was just the american ground loran system that they just slapped another sticker on it's like oh no we got satellites for that now it's like yeah what'd you do with the loran system oh it's still there it's like yeah but you're not using it anymore we didn't say that <laughs> we, just, we just say it, it's gps now and yeah. again, the, the the blind faith where people say, oh, you know, GPS tells me where everything is. It's like, that's a, that's a U.S. military system. <laughs> we came up with it. Do you think it's not compromised? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, yeah. No, no, you're right. Uh, oh, I was going to. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, well, this is just random and this is not flat earth, but it's connected to the Internet stuff. And so, like, uh, you definitely probably know this, but like anywhere between 95 and 98 percent of our, of our Internet connection is underwater fiber optic cables. Yes. And still, and it's been like that for generations and we haven't updated anything, not the grids, not the friggin' any of that stuff. And yeah. right now in Yemen, there's like kind of like training, in, you know, things going on in, in Yemen and yeah. in international yeah. events. And, uh, and so like just off the coast of, uh, of Yemen, um, like that's where like underwater in that, in that sea area, like I forget the name, but I, I anyway, um, that's where the connection, the internet connection from East to West literally is. And oh. so if they fudge with that, there could be like a uh, internet disruptions between the East and West you know, potentially so, because I'm not trusting of, you know, certain people now, <laughs> based I'm, on I, you. you know, everybody, every once in a while, someone will bring that up to me. And what I tell them is I go, you know, cause everyone said, well, you know, the, the, when the cell phones go down, it goes, when they drop the network, I was going, well, yeah, but you got to remember the network right now that these phones, you know, this is their most important tool that they've, they've had for some time. I go, when that, that is the end game. When, if the phones go down, then worry, but they are not going to drop. The phones will stay up for as long as humanly possible because you you know full well you can't control the narrative unless you have these. Exactly. And so whatever message now the last message you put on here before you turn it off, yeah, that's that's the message you you throw out there. By the way, did you ever get a chance to watch um uh or see the trailer for um Civil War, twenty twenty four? No. Oh, good lord. Oh, 2024. Right. Damn it. No, and I don't like it. <laughs> uh, not, I'm trying to avoid not, a similar. Well, you know, there was the movie that came out recently, which was the, uh, I can't remember the title. I hated it so much. The Obama produced. Um, oh, I didn't watch movie. it either. Yeah, it was. No, you don't. It's it's not worth it. Tons and tons of symbolism, uh, but it just drove me nuts. But the trailer that came out a few weeks after that movie came out, which was called, from a British studio of all things, a UK studio called A24, it's called, with Kirsten Dunst, uh, called Civil War 2024. And when you, so when, when you see it, you will, I mean, it rattled some people in our community here because it is, it is literally America secession, you know, where like, like, Western states are seceding and launching National Guard against the Capitol. It's like, what is happening? It's like, That's what they're trying to push for, honestly. Like, even in Canada, they're they trying to push for a civil war. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. They are. I, and I get it. I mean, you know, I mean, anyone like you, I'm sure you've heard the, the term Great Reset thrown around enough times. And as I mentioned to people, and again, I love America. Don't get me wrong. But America, in fact, I'll, I'll bring this up to you real quick. So you'll totally get this. Amer America is the 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 linchpin that 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 has to be diminished before you th even think about our great reset. Because America screws everything up. Because we don't go along with anything. <laughs> I I love America too, by the way. I'm Canadian, but I absolutely and I, I've been all over the, the U.S. as well. I have friends that are American still, even now. I have Canadian friends that actually fled Canada and they're actually living in the U.S., like even Texas and. Wow. in other areas yeah <laughs> they left yeah. like we've been trying to get people to square off against this for a while because you know war is profitable and blah 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 uh the ukraine thing didn't pan out uh um, the taiwan thing's not working the i mean come on we wiped out part of yemen nobody seems to care iran's not making a move and people are saying well why isn't iran you know why why aren't they doing that knee-jerk reaction and coming after us and i said i'll tell you why I go, because we spent so much money and so many years building up our, our defense budget that we have 
stuff, as you know, that nobody else has. I go, I, I go, you know, the term carrier groups, obviously, I, you know, Italy has two, France has two, England has two, uh, China and Russia both have two a total of 10. You know how many we have? We have 11. It's more than everybody else combined. It's like, do you really want to, as weak and as divided and as screwed up as America is? Are you really going to take a crack at them knowing that if you screw up, it, you know, it, you're up in any way, America, I mean, come on, I, I use the analogy, you know, we, we're that, that horrible drunk bully that's sitting outside of the bar after closing, right? Just lurching, right? And, you know, jaw out and you, and you got a bunch of guys like, yeah, we can take him. We can take him. And then you stare at him and you realize he is absolutely strapped head to toe with weaponry, guns and knives and grenades. And you're, and you're thinking... We'll get one shot at this. And if for whatever reason he doesn't go down, it's over. It, it's freaking over. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I ramble. No, so do I. <laughs> yeah, but, even, but, with, uh, even with even with that, like, wait, I'm hoping that people don't fall. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, even with what's going on, like, um, I, I really hope that people don't fall for these. And so, like, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, with with uh, with Northwoods, but it was a uh, it, people wanted to have. Um, military involvement and other government agencies involvement where they would actually be like part, part of the cannon fodder too but on on american soil and this was approved from like high level generals and and, and high levels of, uh, of government to uh yeah. to again attack their own even using like like ships and stuff like that and blame it on the russians and and cuba in order to blame the communists again this seems to be a trend and uh to get us involved into a war i mean i say uh, us because canada has always been involved in like every single war sometimes before sure. the americans you know and um so oh yeah, we well, we, allies. <laughs> we include you. Any English speaking country. Oh yeah. Well, as you know, I mean you I'm sure you've been there with in international groups with the Australians yeah. and the and the SAS and and stuff like that. Have you ever cha had a chance I got to ask you because um I'm a, I've always been a fan of how cagey yeah. Russia is. Have you ever had a chance to to mix around with with Russian guys every once in a while? Uh I know I know uh, people that are that are from Russia. Uh, I haven't uh, the, well, at least I haven't been in Russia. I would love to because especially with the with the history that's there and stuff like that. But um, I feel like because of my uh, my background, I don't want to be like another Michael that, you know, in China where they're political prisoners. You know, I, you know, I like I just I don't want that. And because gotcha. of my background, I still have top secret government clearance here. I could be seen as a spy, possibly. Sure. And so, uh, like, you, know, yeah. like the, you know what? You know what? That's a smart move, because any excuse to, uh, you know, to yeah. discredit you, I'm sure that uh, they would use it. Yeah. Now, again, I, I, the Russians haven't fallen for it. You know, the, the Ukraine thing, you know, the proxy war, as you know, uh, you know, the, the Russians didn't Russia didn't go for it. They didn't escalate. And, you know, that I don't think they're going to blow up Finland. I mean, they know they know the game. They know it as well as anybody. They've been doing this. They're kind, they're older than us. They're, yes. they're looking at us going, yeah, we know what the Americans are trying to do. We're just trying to figure out if it's worth it at this point. Yeah, I I to, go ahead. Like in the native community, I've I've taught I've tried I've literally I I've emailed for years like all levels of cabinet people that are that are involved with NATO the UN because like that was my that was my network and still is but again like I'm just being segregated or, or outcast because uh, you know they don't believe me or they don't understand what I'm saying is actual reality they don't want to believe it and sure. so but but even with what's going on with uh, with Ukraine and Russia with that rabbit hole I was saying right from the beginning that uh there was, it was some false flags like this was and and nato like involvement in, in in multiple countries in europe this was escalating tensions right and this was like causing there to be like a, a pot like anyways it was sowing the seeds of like a, a, a possible possible escalations and russia was saying to ukraine and other areas that you know uh we would see like joining nato as a sign of like like an escalation of force you know what i mean and and obviously for obvious reasons right and and if people know their history they they know that russia has a reason to be a little bit untrusting of Germany, you know, and America, sure. you know, and to be fair, you know, sure. and so it was just, and so for months I was saying that this is possibly going to be something that, 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 that kicks off. And then of course you had like these high levels of government in the U S and other areas uh, that, that visited Zelensky like early on and, and pushed a friggin' war. Right. Cause it was after that visit, like then it's like all the hands on deck, but snake Island, I was calling that right from the beginning, uh, you know, publicly that like, that was a lie. And I was even showing them alive and well, and they were trying to claim that, uh, that, that, uh, that, Ukrainians were uh, sorry that Russians were raping Ukrainian women and uh, and that was all retracted and stuff like that and I was saying that from the beginning and anything that I was receiving that was coming out of that by the way and I've also coordinated um, medical evacuations from Ukraine and stuff like that and people that were there involved in other aspects 
And yeah. so even though I couldn't go because I wasn't vaccinated, I still supported it as best <laughs> I could because of my experiences and stuff like that. But I was sharing this information to people saying like, what are you doing? You know, like, right. What are we doing? Look at that. You know, and I look at the information. And so like, and the spokesperson that was talking about the Ukraine war, um, like she was fired, you know, like early on as well because of lying and inciting violence and, and, and stuff like that. And again, there was crisis actors. This pregnant woman didn't die. You know, this, she's a crisis actor that I shared as well as she was like, doing more crisis acting in other areas, you know, they don't right. generally switch it up. And, um, and then even with, uh, with Nord Stream too, like I was saying that Seymour Hirsch was, he's another analyst, like he's an expert and, uh, and saying that Nord Stream two was, uh, was not Russia. You know, this was friggin' NATO. That was oh, true. How, how, how dare you? You, you know, full well, Russia blew up their own thing. <laughs> and, the, and, and, the, and the and the dam that blew up as well. I'm like, like, like how, like, no. And, uh, there were so many other things as well with the Polish farmers, like with the Ukrainian air defense, we're trying to blame that on Russia as well. And even people that I know in the military, high ranking officers, I'm getting, I was getting arguments on LinkedIn saying that that was, that was, it was Ukraine and their, and the debris was Ukrainian, it, it, all the connections. And they, I was reported and like, uh, I've had multiple accounts deleted on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on anyway. But oh yeah, no, no, I'm, 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 I'm absolutely with you. I mean, yeah, it was the Americans and well, I mean, the the big two, the Americans and the SAS. Yeah. You know, it. I I call it. I basically I say if anything blows up, unusually in either part of the world, it's ninjas, and it's basically who you know, which you know, it's it's either them or us. But the the joke that I've thrown at people, I'll throw it at you, is, and you know the answer to this question. That is, if the media doesn't say that it's a war, but things blow up, is it still a war? No. Because we haven't declared it. It's not a, you know, it's funny. If you don't announce it's a war, you can actually blow up all sorts of stuff all day long. You just tell the public that something else happened, you know, like some factory near Moscow, or I don't know the drones that were flying into Moscow mm -hmm. and, and crap like that. And, and, oh, and, and, and they're claiming that, that didn't, people are still even now saying that, that, that uh, Ukraine has not done anything against, uh, has not retaliated against Russia yet. Right. And I just, I can't, I don't even understand how people can be so misinformed. But uh, I, I mean, I can because in Canada as well, we have so many censorship bills that have been implemented even in the last year where we yeah. can't even see Canadian news. We're actually blocked from seeing it. Um. Yeah. Well, well, again, people people defer to authority on multiple levels. You know, uh, yeah. it's like they I'm not the smartest person in the room. They obviously are. Therefore, whatever they say, I will blindly follow. Uh, and and it's everything. And by the way, I got to back up just a, a minute or so, which is like, wait a minute, you didn't get the shot? Shocking. <laughs> what what what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong with you? Are are you are you anti Canada? Are you an anti patriot? What? Everybody knows safe and effective and things that are medically sound whatever yeah no I'm, I'm by the way i'm very happy that you uh that you stood your ground uh we are oh, we man, lost I, I, cost myself. I don't know what the numbers were in canada and, and feel free to fill me in what you want but oh down here uh, we uh, you know because we have red team and we have blue team you know republicans and democrats uh all of blue team took the shot and 20 30 percent of red team took the shot because they were older and there's like well the government has never led me astray yet it's like <laughs> yeah but this is i don't know if you want to really rush into this and they did and so yeah 70 70 percent of the the population down here has, has gotten the shot so yeah, which wild. is un unfortunate ottawa where i am like they were claiming it it was like over 90 percent and so Oof. uh it, it was awful. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I've lo I lost. Ninety percent of the province took it. Of uh, of Ottawa area, there was a lot of people. There's a lot of government. Um, wow. And so, but in the province of Ontario, I think it was over eighty five percent. Like the entire province, I think it was like over 80, 85 percent took the uh, wow. like double vaccinated. It was pushed hard. We had lockdowns, mandates. Like we, like if you weren't vaccinated, you weren't able to work. You weren't able to to, to leave your province. You weren't able to go yeah. to restaurants or gyms. Uh, not employed, like you, anyway, and they were choosing yeah. like what the uh, what, what was important and not important to for jobs, and uh, which was completely opposite of what should have been in place. And but I was sharing this because I was part of the Mefloquin mass tort, uh, so I was part of a legal um, a class action against uh, the government, not for money at all. That's on the record, but to change policies. So before the pandemic was announced, three or four years before that, I actually was part of this mass tort um, to uh, because of uh, these anti-malarial 
medications that were banned from other countries. They actually yeah. approved them here and they were pushing them. And there were so many adverse side effects and deaths and stuff like that, that uh, they finally eventually stopped it here, but not after a lot of harm and suffering. And these are friggin' military people of service. You know what I mean? Good people. So like, like, uh, it just bothers me that they, anyway. And no, so no, I, hear you. I wanted that to change, you know what I mean? And so I already yeah. knew because of like uh, this alleged sparse, you know, it was going to be coming 2025, 20, 2027, because in my network, people were, we've been saying this for a while, that there's a possibility of a, of a, of a, of a well-executed pandemic, whatever you want to call it in the right. near future. And so, so fortunately I was aware, you know what I mean? That this is something that was going to be oncoming. Luckily I was because, uh, because maybe I would have, you know what I mean? Fell for it as well. Like, who knows? Right. And uh, because I was getting pushed by a lot of people, like I, people were tagging my home, uh, like threatening me. I was getting death threats. I was getting all like it, you name it. <laughs> Good for you, though, for standing your ground. I mean, no, and, seriously. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, let, let me tell you a, a quick story, you know, because, again, you stood strong and you're saying, well, you, you know, it, it, and I was vocal. And because what? I was vocal, I put myself out there and I, I and I was part of the Freedom Convoy. Like I was I, I announced that it was probably going to be like January 6th. So I literally in my head, like I'm like, I could possibly get shot being downtown, but I'd rather call out this possibility of having a stupid riot, you know, right. planned by leftists, you know what I mean? Not by anyone that's part of the, uh, like the convoy itself. And, right. um, but yeah, and, and just to speak out and call out things. And it's been a mess. Good, no, seriously good for you. I have known, uh, enough people. I do a segment every, um, every week on a podcast called, um, lucky unlucky, uh, just to remind people every time, you know, and it's, and it's people basically, if you had a side effect, like a stroke or a heart attack, but you lived, you were lucky. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> even though you know a lot of them didn't look like they were lucky and then the unlucky ones were the ones you know this dropped like the, the lady just um, a couple days ago who was giving a eulogy at her father's funeral and she went down in the middle of the eulogy it was like just like are you kidding me and that was it i mean she just died right there and and i and they say why do you do that every week i go to so, because there are still people caving in to this day where it's like okay it's like why'd you wait so long you know, like there was a guy, actually a guy from Canada, I, I love that little clip, where he came down to the States for the World Series of Poker, right? And, and he, like, he was sitting, and they were hot mic'd, and he was sitting next to a guy on the table, and they were talking, it's like, how'd you get in? You know, it's like, oh, you know, I got the shot. And it's like, dude, he's like, you actually got the shot to come down here? He goes, dude, it was the World Series of Poker. It's like, I mean, but I mean, I've, I've run into people that, that did it for less. You know, Me too. they did it Me because too. they wanted to. Sorry, and because being vocal about this from the very beginning, and warning people off. You and have to on your side. Well, it oh, doesn't matter. Nice. Well, once it once it does on one side, uh, it does it automatically for both. That way, um, there's no issues. Okay, so where where do we leave off? We were going off in all sorts of different directions. I know. Uh, <laughs> the the point is let let let's sum up some stuff. Okay, Canadian military, all sorts of awards. Uh, you believe the, you've been, uh, you've been into flat earth for actually quite a few years that by the way, it, another side note, it, how did I miss your cha channel for so long? I, I honestly believe, and it's not to sound arrogant, but I believe that the censorship is so heavy in Canada that like, it's just, I, I feel like I'm one of like a select few people on a friggin' list that is yeah. censored. I, I, I do yeah. like, I, it hadn't, I seriously, hadn't I done search for flat earth. Think of how specific I had to get. I had to search for flat earth. I had to say sort by upload date. And then only because you were doing a live stream, did it show up in the top five, five search results of a very limited search result. And it's like, Oh, Hey, who's this person? Um, and again, if you're listening for the first time, uh, it's Don, uh, Disso, Disso. Yes, exactly. Uh, D D U S S A U L T. Her channel is literally Don D U S S A L T. It is a real name. Kudos to you for using your real name, your real identity. <laughs> I know you're smiling. It's like, no, no, you don't know how rare it is. Or maybe you do. It is extremely rare. And I don't recommend it unless you have like my, you know, like I, I guess skill sets and, and, and understanding of like how dangerous that can be because I've had people try to break into my home, circle my block. I've had people stalk me at my gym, uh, at my dog trails. I, I, I have foot, uh, foot, footprints from like my back steps, like in a closed area. And, and so like, I'm just saying like, it doesn't come without a lot of risk, you know, and it threats to yep. your life, your house being tagged, you know, even for social media, like, uh, so. <laughs> yep. Yeah. No, no. I, I totally get it. Um, you are absolutely in the truth or community. Uh, you are, uh, 
I think a shining example. I do not, again, do I recommend that all, all women should try to do what you do? No, no. Like you're saying, it takes a specific skill set. Um, I don't even recommend most women even use their real name yeah. because men are idiots. Luckily for you, you can handle yourself. And if somebody showed up at your house, uh, I wouldn't want to face you down, even though you're five, four. <laughs> you know, Cause no, no. I mean, no, I've seen some of your pictures. It's like, nope. No, I, I mean, I may win, but I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not going to be unscathed. Let's put it that way. Yeah. There's no, woman, there's I totally no. get that. But for out of women, I mean, like I'm, I'm very skilled. I still don't think I could beat up an average man. I still think that the average teenage boy, you know what I mean? could like beat me in sports. So like, I, like that's also something like I'm, I'm, I'm self-aware. You're realistic yeah, along those, those exactly. things. I, I, again, no, don't, don't. Hey, look, I am sir. I am very, very pro woman. No, no question. Me too. But I, I kind of smirk every once. Well, okay, two things. You know what? Let's get a couple other things out of the way while we're at, because I'm sure you agree. <laughs> First off, I, I kind of smirk a little bit when, uh, you know, the women's soccer team all of a sudden plays some random university of get the guys and they just light them up, you know, because the 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 guys are like, it's like, 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 yeah, it's men and women. But to that point. I, and I don't know what, again, it's, it's part of the division and I'm sure you've seen it where it's like, there's one thing I'm really set that I've been sad about in the last couple of years. And that is how women's sports have been just decimated. Hijacked. Down the what? It's hijacked. Yeah. Yeah. By, by, and, by, by, by abusive men, like mentally. Yeah. I mean, I mean, anyway. Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, again, I look, I'm, I'm, I don't hate anyone, all God's children. I'm not judging whatever, but at the same time, it's like, you know, the part that embarrasses me the most, and it's like, you guys got some real problems, which is the the lesbian community, no no offense to lesbians out there, yeah. could not stand up. It's like, look, there's a lot of, the lesbian community has a huge presence in women's sports, and they're getting pushed out. I, I was because, surprised that there was not more resistance from the lesbian community. They, they can't. They can't because they're uh, they're under the same flag. And yeah. and so it's like they're going – It technically, I'm sure they're conflicted. It's like, yeah, but I, I don't want to go against our own group. We, we've gone so far. It's, it's like, yeah. But, done, because it was LGB for a while. Sorry for cutting you off. You know what exactly. I mean? They've added the TQIA plus XYZ. Yeah. You know, it, at, recently in the last five years, right? Yeah. The, so, the club. You're absolutely right. The club used to be pretty small. It was a pretty small club and everybody knew their place and everybody knew what, who had each other's back. But then this happens, the, the fringe of a fringe group that all of a sudden got way more clout than they, they were supposed to. And, and, and again, I, what I, I'm a big believer in, I look, I don't believe in male privilege. I don't believe in majority or, or um, white privilege. I believe in majority yeah. privilege, which is if you have the majority, and this is just human nature. If you have the majority, you're going to take the privilege. That's what you do. Every culture has ever done it ever. There's a reason why you're called the minority. When you become the majority, you tell me you're not going to do the same thing. Of course you will. You're going to bend the rules to you to suit you. Uh, and, and by that, I mean, majority privilege in terms of either one of three things, either sheer numbers, uh, strength of arms, you know, like military or currency, strength of currency. You use something like South I mean, Africa. It could be like the religious aspect to it as well. Like, I, like, well, not, yeah, but, not that, now, but, but, like but, just the, but that usually goes with the numbers, usually. Yeah. What, one of the two. It, but, but I mean, like, look at South Africa, a great example. The, the white group has the money and the military. They do yeah. not have the numbers. You, you have to have two of the three. And if you have two of the three, you're, you're going to take murdered. it. murdered. And even the government is, is, is pushing for like them. Like, they're talking about like the murder of the Boers and. And, uh, yeah. and there's people that are suffering like now with, with massive starvation in South Africa because these Boers, these white Africans that are that were farmers. For, I, I've been to South Africa as well, but um, yeah. they're, um, they're, I mean, when you're dead, you can't grow things, right? So there's a lot of people right. that, that were relying on these farmers for food, and now they don't have that. So so maybe, like, you know, if you're going to murder people that are, you know, like supporting for your community, like, have a have a backup plan you know what i mean yep. maybe have people to replace them and uh but yeah you're right and so like there's there's countries now right there it's not they're not multicultural they're not melting pots they're la largely homogenous right like china and india yeah. and all these places and we're not arrogant enough to go in these places and and, and shit on them no offense and you know like oh I, there, you should be i should be represented in government and like right. all of these other freaking ethnic right. groups as well and skin colors i'm not pushing this in any, any of these countries and, yeah. and, and, and white people, for example, we are actually the minority internationally. Okay. Yeah. And so why is it that like the, uh, like the, the countries that are primarily the majority of uh, white skin, why are we getting targeted when we're already openly accepting people and have for many years and we're, we're trying to make things work? You know what I mean? You know, and, and we're, we're getting so 
um, vilified and character assassinated, but the people that don't even know their own history. So they're talking about slavery. There was yeah. white slaves too in North America, you know, even in the 14 and 1500s and even before oh, yeah. that. Okay, even my family comes from slaves, you know what I mean? Or sex slaves to begin, like, also, like, Fidel Roy. Oh, yeah, we, we didn't invent slavery. No, we did not. <laughs> not <laughs> and even we're getting close. vilified, you know, and, and saying that because, like, just because, just because, like, there's more white people than other colors, you know, that that somehow we're demonic or that we're privileged because of this. You're not right. saying that everyone in China is privileged because, like, they're all the same friggin' skin color. Like, I just right. don't get it. And I, I know people that work their asses off that are white, like, that definitely don't come from friggin' privilege. This is a class war. This is, like, yeah. a poor against the friggin' elite rich weirdos. Yeah. And uh, and so uh, and so people thinking that they're more oppressed, you know, or yeah. that they're victims. This is all stuff that's make-believe, unfortunately, that's being per- pushed by not just... Uh, these like corporate corporate people, but unfortunately, the education systems have bought into this as well, and they're they're drinking yeah. the woke. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the education system is blue team. The media is mostly blue team. Uh, the blue team has their agenda, which is why, again, we, you know, as you know, as you're probably too much aware, um, the ele- our election year is now upon us. And we'll have to see how that goes. Although I've got a funny feeling if I had to make a prediction today, it's like there's no way they're going to let Trump win because if you want to, you know, America to be more divided and, and I'm sure again, you've, you've heard the rumors or maybe you haven't heard the whispers that, um, that Joe Biden will be pushed out, uh, in some months from now and will be replaced by, uh, a new candidate. Have you heard oh, this rumor? You're saying Gavin Newsom and other candidates. Would well, be- yeah, but did you hear who the VP will be? For, I'm for assuming Gavin. like maybe Vivek Swami or River Swami or Ron DeSantis or Rand oh, Paul. Think, oh, no, you're, you're, you're thinking too small here. Oh, actually, before I, oh, actually, no, I will, I, I, I will, can, I will allow you to let me know. <laughs> oh, no, the VP would be Michelle Obama. Oh, Michael. Nice. And by the way, thank you for correcting me. I'm sorry. I, I pronounced it right. I thought it was Michelle. Weird. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> oh, and fun fact on that. So there's just some, uh, like, again, this is just, uh, out there but uh yeah. it, it was uh it was four i believe in the uh in the in the hoover uh building that predicted that the the first female president would be uh would come when uh, at the fall or repl- or uh, or resignation whatever you want to call it of a uh of a, of a sitting president that's a that's a man and so that's why i was thinking that just a fun fact that there would be like six years six months and six days um that uh by the by the time that biden was inaugurated on the 5th of january 2021 uh, yeah. to the 21st of july of this year and in my community, like that's like I know that that's the tw- because I'm also into gematria or gematria, and so that's the 201st day of the year. 201 is a, is a huge number in certain elite occult groups, and so I was thinking that that could possibly be the day. Uh, you know what I mean? There's just a lot of like there's just a lot of symbolic numbers, numerology in there. Yeah. That, like maybe that would be the day that like Biden like uh, quits or resigns, and then it c- could it possibly be Kamala Harris be you know, obviously the incumbent president or whatever, just even if it's briefly for a few months until like this other president comes in and uh, and that could fill, fulfill a prophecy because she, uh, her birthday is actually the day that uh, that Hoover died, I believe it was. And so like the the, the year and the date uh, in October. And so- Sure. Anyway, well, that's a, that, that is a bold, no, that's that, you know what? That segues into something we should probably get into because uh, we don't want to, we don't want to wear out our welcome here, but no, <laughs> no, let's, let's do this. Let's, because I, I like where you're going with this. So, because we haven't really even talked about it. <laughs> when people, and, and you can, I'll let you run for a little bit on this, which is, so when people come to your channel, and again, anyone that's listening to this, who listens to my, look, I highly endorse Don's channel, highly endorse it. So please, please come to it, uh, sub. But when they come to your channel, what are they going to, what, what, what are they, what should they expect when, when they get there? What, do, what are you going to, what do you touch on? What do you, what do you like to, what do you like to rant about? Because you do quite a few rants. I do <laughs> because uh, because I'm not scripted at all. Like I don't have like no, like notes really or anything. Like I, I, sometimes I don't even know what I'm going to talk about, and I can yeah. actually talk myself into getting upset sometimes <laughs> because it's like French Canadian me, I guess. But when I'm bringing up points, I can actually get myself upset by talking about it, and then I'll go on a completely different tangent or or, or rant, and yeah. that has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm also on uh, on Rumble. Uh, I have more videos on Rumble just because I've had I've had so many videos taken off of YouTube. That yeah. uh, but on Rumble I'm called Don One Eight Nine, and so um, Don Don One Eight Eight Nine. Sorry, no Don One Eight Nine. Don One Eight Nine on Rumble. Cool. Yes. Anywhere else? 
and uh, YouTube, Don Do So. I'm on, I'm on Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on X. And um, I think that's really it for now. I'm trying to get on Rockfin. Who knows? I don't even know what that is, but it just seems like there's a lot of good content on there. So I wanted to throw myself in there as well. But I'm that's not on that yet. I'm I'm on Rockfin, but I have I have no idea who put me on Rockfin. I I think it's I think my one of my co-hosts. Oh, good. Put, yeah, you should be on Rockfin. Um, yeah. So on Rumble, which is where a lot more of my videos are, you're gonna see the, the videos are long. I'm not gonna lie, and I do yeah. start a lot of my videos even if I'm talking about astrotheosophy, which we didn't even get into today. But I have a, a board with like things that I discuss. That's that's more along the lines of like pr it, it proves flat Earth, but from yeah. an astrotheosophical uh, way that's based on the luminaries. But anyway, and so I talk about current events first and it's international because like my work is international. And so I do cover a lot of American politics and current events as well. Sure. And then I get into, I share videos that I think are, are, are interesting or, 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 or good. And uh, it's along so many different topics. It's 9-11, it's January 6th. And possibly, by the way, with January 6th, that uh, a lot of people are still getting wrong, even in the truther community is uh, some people are getting it right, but that Ashley uh, Babbitt is is possibly possibly still alive and is a crisis actor, and um, and so who knows about that? But on my on yeah, my got, on my got, channel, got to be careful there. But go ahead. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, okay. On my channel, it's just uh, again I don't know. This is not confirmed at all, and so yeah. there's just the compelling videos that I share, and um, on on January 6, 9-11, definitely on flat Earth, um, astrotheosophy. And then even uh, for events throughout history, just from like my perspective, that could possibly be a conspiracy. And so yeah. Titanic, Pearl Harbor, Holodomor, USS Liberty, Northwoods, and uh, and then even with the wars that are go going on right now, just like my, my interpretation of them coming from like my, uh, my, and I'm sorry if I'm saying you're... anything that's like controversial. Like I, I'm just, like, I like that you've like, correct me. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I, I mean, it so like, much. I, what? What I do is when I when I um upload it to YouTube, I let it run through the filters first before I make it public. Okay. And then okay. and then I I take a look. It's like all right, am I going to get tagged? Most of the time you don't. Uh, you generally have to harp on a topic for a little while before all of a sudden you know if you all of a sudden start focusing, it's like here's what I think about this band topic, and you just start blah 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 blah. You know then and right now there there's only. There's three things that are absolutely banned now on YouTube. One, of course, is medical misinformation, which you know yes. all too well. Uh, the other is uh, mentioning false flags in relation to a topic. You know, there's a couple out there. Uh, you can't say, you know, so if somebody died during something, you can't immediately come out and say, I don't believe in this because or or these people didn't die because of this. Um, and the third one was, uh, <laughs> which they rolled back. It's now just two. Third one actually was the... Um, uh, the election, which really? was, yeah, yeah. For several years, you could not say that, uh, that Trump won and was cheated because of this. Yeah, oh, you, yeah. could not, you could not say I it. But, and then flat earth was recommended much, much less. I'm sorry you weren't there during the glory years, but those first three years were, were 2015, it. <laughs> 2018. It was amazing. I mean, YouTube was promote. We were the binge topic on, on YouTube. They were just promoting us whenever they could. And really? so many people got into it. And then all of a sudden they realized, because then they did like a, a government Senate hearing and they pulled, pulled, took the foot off the gas. Didn't hit the brakes. Nobody, nobody's been banned for flat earth because that's silly, right? No, you're right. Like my, 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 my videos that have gotten taken off, uh, yeah. the, the first two things that you just mentioned, that's exactly why. Like, and so you're, it's a, I, I've experienced that literally because of that. And yep. I have flat earth videos up and, and other things and, uh, and they're still up. So awesome. Uh, just with that warning at the bottom. <laughs> sure. Like uh, okay, so those are all the topics that that uh, that you cover. You've been your channel's been up for this channel's been up for how long? This particular one uh, on on Rumble or on no. YouTube? You've been on Rumble. Let's we'll, you know what? Let's go with Rumble. How long you been on Rumble? Um, I've been on Rumble for a year and a half. Okay, and uh, on YouTube, uh, like my first channel, I had it up um, as of 2016, and 2018 yeah. is when I was starting a bit with content, but it was getting shut down and then I, I i'm on account number three or four and this nice. one has been up it's only recent um i want to say a year and a half like a, a year and a half that's a that's a badge of honor for the truth community if you've had channels seriously if you can go it's like oh yeah i've had channels taken down they multiple. burn down. Yeah, multiple <laughs> channels taken down yeah then, no seriously that's that's a good sign that means you're not randomly even linkedin i'm on account number three for linkedin even like of all things and that's weird yeah. linkedin <laughs> <laughs> because, and, really? That was flat Earth, actually. That uh, that was flat Earth. Oh, and actually, like with Wayne Air, 
our CDS, he reported my, me t saying that the, um, the missile that struck Poland, that it was Ukrainian, and my, my account was deleted, like, literally an hour after that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well. So I'm assuming it was that. It could have been something else. <sighs> yeah, you never know. You never know. But hey, at least you're at least you're up now. Uh, I'm seriously. I'm so glad that uh, that that I, I have a chance. I have I have the exclusive chance to bring you into the fold. Uh, I appreciate I, it so much. Like I'm so happy because like I was saying to this to this to family. I'm just like like literally one of the originals. It's been like I said like eight nine years at least that you've been talking yeah, about this. Yeah, and, my, and my my clues turn nine years old uh, February 10th. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Like so, like I, literally the OG for this stuff. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm old. Okay, <laughs> you don't have to push it. I didn't mean no. that. I mean, like in the, no, in the no, no, community, no, it, that's very old. That's like no, no, it is. I mean, seriously. I know. And now thinking back, it's like, wow, I've been doing this for nine years. Yeah. It's so long. Although, to be fair, I mean, the the last what three years? I mean, during the pandemic, time was just an illusion, which most of it is anyway. But I mean, time was just compressed during that for me because it was just this flurry of frustration, and I was just glad to get out of it. Um, okay. Um, is there any parting parting words? Any recommendations? Anything you want the people to know before they they come to your channel? Oh, um, you, you swear from time to time on your channel. I do. Oh, I do. I try. Okay? I try not to. I really do. And and, and it's because Fine. of my You're... who I hang out with. Like I, I like I, I have friends that are that are that are Kiwis, Aussies, but but even people from the UK and uh, and they and the UK guys like they use the C word literally every second word that I know. And so it's really oh, yeah. hard to not swear. <laughs> Oh, that's a thing. And by the way, I, I used to brace when I heard that word until I started hanging out with people in the UK. And it's like, yeah. okay, yeah. it's a thing over there. It's every second just, word. It's, yeah. It yeah in fact, they, I, I think it's their replacement word for bitch. <laughs> I, I think most of the time they don't, they don't, you don't hear them use the word, you know, bitch. They, you know, don't be a bitch. It's like, no, no, no. You know, don't be the C word. Like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that has a lot of punch to it. Well, that's, well, um, I, I would say any, that I, um, I can, I, like, the videos are long and uh, it's just because like, I'm not making any money off these videos at all. I'm actually putting money into it, as you would know. Sure. I'm sure when you started, like it was, you were putting a lot of your own money into it yeah. and uh, I'm hoping you have a lot more money now and a team and, and I like you do have a team, but like, uh, anyway, um, I think this year though, it's going to blow up a little bit more. Like I think that uh, like the flat earth truther thing that stuff is coming out because even in, in Canada, um, again, another tangent, but the freedom convoy just announced yesterday that it was uh, deemed uh, the emergency act that was declared was deemed unconstitutional huh. and illegal and so that just happened yesterday and so so things are looking up right like like we were losing faith in things but my videos are long and i'm sorry yep. for that and uh, i do try to uh, stick to uh, the topics but i i, I rarely do <laughs> and, uh, and i talk about everything <laughs> i've heard again, i could be wrong in things too um but i i, uh, I you know I, I feel like i've been on top of like m the, the, the big things, right? So like what I was talking before about my pr possible predictions with Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, I'm not right. like, I'm not set on that, right? That's not a hill I'm, I'm dying on. I'm just throwing out fun facts, right? And seeing like, it would be interesting if it happened. Yeah. But like I am, like I do believe, uh, you know, that again, that the earth is flat. This, this is a, uh, a simulated environment, electromagnetic reality and that um, there are certain events that I'm not going to use the, like that word that uh, I've, I've been using, but there are certain events that need more consideration, more in, uh, investigation into. And I yep. delve into a lot of that in my videos. So they're long because there's a lot of content that I'm sharing and I'm bringing on like experts, uh, you know, that are, that are sharing information. And so it's necessary. Like you, you can't talk about flat earth in, yeah. in like five minutes to someone, you know, and expect that they're going to understand everything about it. <laughs> No, and and I I enjoy listening to your thought process. There is a lot going on in your head, and uh, so I will I will listen to your rants. Usually, it's not live, unfortunately, because you do them whenever you do them. By the time I get there, it's like you know, oh yeah, done done to so three hours ago. It's like damn it. So I'll put it on the background. I'm generally not watching you, and I'll I'll be working on stuff, and then I'll just be listening to you in the background, which is great. So if you guys for those and there's a lot of people that listen to my stuff in the background. So if you want to listen to Don go down the various rabbit holes in no particular order. Uh, definitely. Cause I've seen, I've listened to you do it where it's like, you're going to on this rabbit hole and then you take a, a side turn and then another side turn and then maybe come back and go a different way. And then all of a sudden pause and then you lost where you were and then you have to backtrack <laughs> and you never, and you never stop. I almost never. That's the one thing I really, really enjoyed about your stuff is 
there's almost no dead air. You know, there's some people that they're like pause and they'll be like, hang on, I got to look something up or whatever it is. And, but you, it's like, no, 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 you're, I'm, I'm impressed. Cause you did a, you did a, th- a thing this morning and then it's like, oh yeah, can I talk to you this afternoon? Sure. I didn't even, <laughs> I mean, no, it's great. So no, enjoy. I have enjoyed, uh, um, talking to you a lot. I'm so, so glad that, uh, my, my only regret is that, um, uh, we didn't talk earlier because I would have said, "Oh yeah, come down, come down to the conference." Because I think you would have been. I totally went. Yeah, absolutely. You you would have you would have had so much fun. Uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, we do can- Canadian meetups every once in a while. Not as many. You know, the pandemic curbed a lot of them, but yeah. uh, the meetups wherever they are are so much fun. A lot of people that uh, I mean, it's a family. And and once when you're there, the 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 shields all come off because everyone's like, "Oh yeah, every everybody knows who they are." And it's like, there's no, there's no, you don't have to be cautious. It's like, no, just throw it out there. So it's great. That'd be nice. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The walking on the eggshells, like feeling like you can't really like relax in any environment. Like I, I totally resonate with that. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So, um, uh, before I let you go, what's, uh, what's your next thing you're going to do? Another, how often, how often do you do your, um, your streams? I, I aim to do them daily because oh, wow. uh, because I'm I'm not well known and so like I'm very passionate about what I'm sharing because like I do feel like it's really 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 important and a lot yeah. of the things that I've been calling out it w- would have saved lives and caused less suffering had it been out there you know what I mean like more out there and yeah. so um so I go I, I do go live at least daily if I can and um and so my next thing is like I might I might end up doing a writing a book even though that takes a lot of like time. And a, a lot of people have that have written books have told me that they um, it didn't really go anywhere. You know what I mean? They put a lot of time, energy, sure. and, and money into it. And, it, and so, like, I don't know. But um, I'm, I'm diving more into the astro theosophy because that seems to be, like, something that other people aren't talking about. Because in our truther community, um, you've covered a lot of topics already. And so have other, other people really well. Yeah. And so yeah. I wouldn't really be adding, you know, a whole lot, right? I mean, I do mm-hmm. try. But uh, there's a lot of good content out there that, I, that I've been leading people to or sharing. But I, but the astro theosophy, I'm still, I'm not seeing that angle that people are really using in a correct way. So there okay. are people that are, that are in that, you know, realm, but, uh, they're, they're missing major pieces of information and I'm trying to reach out to them. They're calling me wrong. I'm blowing their, their arguments out of the water. Like no offense, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm destroying their arguments and they're not even looking at it because yeah. so they're, so even in the truth community, like I'm trying to, again, talk about this just to clarify you know, certain mythological figures and, and, and why it also helps the, uh, the flat earth community, because it just shows that, uh, anyways, it just like, just like the rabbit hole, like when you uncover one thing, everything else goes right. So like, even with Saturn, uh, being, uh, you know, a representation of, uh, sorry, Satan being like a, a representation of Saturn who rules over Aquarius and Capricorn and Capricorn being yeah. like represented by a goat and Aquarius being represented by a human. That's why you have Satan playing words with, with, with Saturn being like half human, half goat and then even with that connection with the color red like that's in the first chakra that's why satan is considered to be red and um but but i I dive so much more into that and lucifer being venus and my reasons why and then about the uh, electromagnetic fields and uh and and all that stuff and and so like it's probably really boring to a lot of people (laughs) but uh but it's really interesting to me and it really like puts it all together i think a little bit more let me, let me end with this, um, because what you just said there, yeah, it, it's, it might be boring to you, but, you, but you love doing it, right? Yes, something, I I, love it. Something, something that Einstein said, which was, doesn't matter if you find something that you love, pursue it regardless. It, for, you know, the rest will work out for itself. You know, it's all about you. It's not about other people. It's about you. So, I mean, yeah, if you want to get a message about uh, out there for, for other people in terms of one thing, that's, that's, that's fine. But uh, if you enjoy it, you know, I'll, I'll more power to you. <laughs> so anyway, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, what we'll do is I'll, I'll stop the recording and we'll talk for a minute more afterwards. But uh, again, Don Don Dussault, uh, D U S S A U L T. That is her channel. Please, by all means, check it out. Uh, we will be talking again, I am sure. And uh, if so. you have any questions, and and by the way, should should we put your email address out there or not? If you want to, um, it's at Don189 at protonmail.com. Perfect. Don189. And I've already had a, a couple of people emailing me uh, just in the last week, too. Just great messages. 
and I'm used to death threats or the, the pee pee pics, you know what I mean? And stuff like that. So like getting a good message was great. <laughs> Sorry, I, do, like, I do appreciate them. Oh, it's horrible. Yeah. Men are, men are pigs. Men are absolutely <laughs> awful. And I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm, Hey, look, being an attractive, you know, woman, you know, it's 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 a blessing and a curse, I am sure. Uh, but yeah, it, minimize the the negatives, maximize the positives. Hopefully, hopefully, good things will will come forward. And again, I am so sorry that uh, that we missed you up until now. All right, thank you, thank you, and we will talk again soon.